in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the communication of our determination for spiritual things and you see the thing about God is it takes a level of desire God loves everybody he does not trust everybody trust is based on a track record a track record of hunger a track record of a, a predeterminate desire in your heart many of us have come here tonight I came I saw people outside you know some lying flat trusting god for a miracle probably they were carried here you know and all of that there must be a desire you may not have the power in yourself to lift yourself up from the wheelchair or from the crutch or whatever it is but you must communicate that passion i love the people who led the prayers they kept adjusting our faith to understand that look it will take a hunger and a desire the moment you have options then forget about encounters are we together you have to insist tonight and say lord i'm not walking out of here barren i'm not walking out of here sick i'm not walking out of here with the same level of confusion i'm not walking out of here bankrupt of that dimension of the anointing i came with an exact desire an exact intention and whenever you insist you provoke the hand of god this is very true psalm 30 look at 37 i think it should be 37 it just came to my spirit i'm searching for that scripture now yeah delight yourself also in the lord and he shall give thee the what the desires of thy heart it is possible for god to come to a man and not be able to communicate anything because there is no desire are we together now now you see god is almighty his possibilities are endless it takes the construction that our faith builds to channel the dimension of him that we seek to see revealed in our lives are we together now if you're not barren there is no need god coming to reveal himself as one who can open up your womb you're not barren that dimension of him is possible but it is not needed as far as your desires are concerned so it is the responsibility of the believer to intentionally use your faith to create an exact expectation lord i am trusting that you will visit me i am crippled i'm trusting that this leg will work lord there are all kinds of oppression in my life all doors have been closed i'm trusting that the doors be open you cannot say lord just come do whatever you want to do that's not a very wise prayer you have to define it say give us this day he didn't just say what we want give us this day our daily bread he can give many things he sent quails he sent bread he brought water out of the rock there are several things he can do you define the possibilities of god that should be communicated to you through your faith but much more than just blind faith through specificity specificity of desire specificity of um, intention are we together now so i just thought that it is very important in fact this is a general principle that works in life not just when it comes to receiving from god you will never achieve anything when there is no exact desire you will never achieve anything when there is no specificity there has to be that dimension of exactness lord i am trusting you for a move of the spirit in my life i'm trusting you that my ministry will step into another dimension i'm trusting you that my family will step into another dimension end the plague of sickness and all kinds of things when you connect this way then it becomes impossible for you to walk without a miracle hallelujah praise the lord let me encourage our hearts this morning 
before we rise up john 14 verse 12 i am a firm believer in the bible the words of jesus are no story to me when i read them i believe them they are not just scripture they are life i believe them exactly as they are written jesus is teaching here and this is what he says verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me whoever believes on me he says the works that i do he shall also do and greater works than this shall he do because i go to the father jesus now there are all kinds of theological debates as to what exactly jesus was talking about um, many people meant a higher dimension of reality other people talk of greater results regardless of what dimension you look at it jesus was saying there is a possibility of walking in a dimension that you were not born with listen carefully a dimension that is god's own class of results are we together now he's teaching us how to live a life that is invincible and this is what he says he says that greater dimensions that you have seen manifest you will walk in and you see every time god speaks before he utters a word he vets and probes himself whether he has the capacity to make good that word every time he speaks it is a communication of a a resolve he has searched and he has found out that what he's saying is within his capacity to produce it there are several people in need of the touch of God people talk about anointing all the time they want to step into deeper dimensions they want to tap into the wave of revival that is sweeping across cities and by the way I want you to know that there is a mighty move of God that is happening across the continent of Africa specifically Nigeria um, away with all those blind talks that people talk as if nothing is happening it takes the eye of the spirit to see the formation there is a mighty mighty move of the spirit an awakening that is sweeping across and what a joy it is to participate in contributing our quota to that 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 unstoppable tsunami that will sweep across the nations of the earth the, the word of god is full of prophecies that points to those seasons that a time will come in the dealings of god with men where they will be able to tap into higher dimensions of his possibility they will be able to cause his glory to be revealed across territories in measures and dimensions that have not been previously known so i want you to believe up front that we are a people who believe all of god and we are a people who have aligned ourselves to allowing god find full expression there is no limit to the dimension of God that can be revealed. Every time God looks limited, the limitation is not his capacity. It is our inability to understand his system and to align enough to bring down, to be able to host all the multifaceted possibilities that are contained in him. Are we together now? And tonight there are several cases. Right from home I began to see several situations that touched my heart and i said lord you can't let your people go that way and the lord put something in my heart that i just want to share with us very briefly and then we'll pray i have a passion and a commitment to helping people have an encounter a true encounter not just a noise making encounter an encounter with a definite result that you will leave and it will be very clear that heaven found expression in your life heaven found expression in your situation heaven found expression that your life will be an epistle to let people know that jesus is not limited in any way if you believe that say amen, amen. hallelujah first john chapter 5 and verse 4 apostle john taught us something very remarkable first john chapter 5 and then verse 4 and he said for whatsoever is born of god whatsoever is born of god has capacity to overcome the world are we together now that's the expression there whatever is born of god has capacity to overcome the world but then he says that that overcoming is engaged through a system the dear lady who led prayer here taught us about spiritual intelligence 
are we together every time you see possibilities in scripture now there are two dimensions i've taught you of accessing the reality of scripture there is the prophetic dimension realities as far as god's dimension is concerned but there is the experience of it where it becomes manifest in your life on the strength of your engaging the required mysteries that demonstrate your partnership with god to actualize it are we together now so here the bible says whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world the rendition there is has capacity enshrined in it is the composition to overcome this system and all the limitations that come with it and then he says and this is the victory in other words this is the system wherewith the victory was designed to find expression he says even our faith even our faith even our faith it takes faith in this kingdom to be able to produce realities that have been represented in scripture realities that are capable of being our testimony the fact that the bible records them does not mean they will happen automatically i think this is one of the biggest challenges with the body of christ i don't think we are unaware of the provisions that are guaranteed from scripture but the systems everybody says systems say it one more time systems the systems of the kingdom that were built around those possibilities the inability to access what system was designed to produce what outcome will make us continue to look at scripture and believe they are there but never walk in the experience of it it is god's desire not only that we read the bible and see possibilities written therein but that our lives become epistles that those realities that are represented in the bible must find expression in my life and your life when the bible says that a believer should walk in miracles signs and wonders we can read it we can write books about it but there is it's an entirely different thing to engage the systems required to bring that individual into an experience of it are we together the bible says for instance they shall lay hands on the sick many people have tried it they laid hands on the sick and the sick were not healed every time you try a thing and it does not work there is something you do not understand about what you studied that's why it takes the spirit of revelation ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 the prayer of paul to the church you don't have to turn there he cried they were born again they were believers but he knew that they needed to be assisted by a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit otherwise they would never enter into the experience of the kingdom nicodemus came to jesus by night chapter 3 of john and he says verse 1 rabbi he says we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things and then he said unto him in verse 3 he says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again listen carefully he says he cannot see the kingdom then the next verse nicodemus says how can how can a man be born for a second time can he enter back into his mother's womb and then verse 5 he opens up up to another dimension he says verily verily i say unto you except a man listen be born of what water and the spirit then he says he cannot enter so he talks of seeing the kingdom an awareness of the possibilities that are there you know that there is a provision in the dealings of god with men for the sick to be healed there is a provision in the dealings of god with men where men are immune from the ability of sicknesses to touch them there is a provision where we are lifted above the grip of 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 demons and devils but it's one thing to have that awareness listen believers but it's another thing to understand the systems and the mysteries that were attached to be able to cause us to walk in the experience of that outcome so we we hold several scriptures that we cannot defend with our lives there is a possibility for restoration but what is the key that is attached i am passionate about revealing to believers the mysteries that are responsible for causing spiritual realities to become their experience just like shortly we are going to be celebrating 
the victory miracles upon miracles but the issue is not just an anointed man the issue is that underlying these miracles and testimonies and the manifestations of the grace and the power of God are vessels that have aligned themselves through understanding you see most of us um, the theology about faith listen carefully the theology about faith that is being communicated as powerful as it is may limit us from walking in the experience of the power the grace and the revelation of all that is contained in God faith is not just believing unseen things um, they don't have to be unseen faith is not just believing unseen things so that they will manifest that's a dimension of it but faith listen true bible faith the foundation for true bible faith starts with an encounter an encounter without an encounter you will not have true bible faith an encounter is not a vision an encounter is an experience that is initiated by the holy spirit that causes a spiritual truth a reality the reality of a scripture to be crystallized in your heart the end of an encounter is conviction the end of an encounter is conviction you'll never be able to walk in a dimension where you are guessing and hoping and wondering no sir encounters are necessary for believers that's why the holy spirit was given to us the spirit of truth are we together now so he introduces encounters in our lives you can read the bible and quote a scripture it doesn't mean you've had an encounter with that scripture you may even learn it and know it of heart sincerely speaking it has not been released in your heart but when the holy ghost breathes upon it it does something to you and that scripture comes alive it's called an encounter occasionally it may be backed up by visionary experiences to strengthen your conviction but the end of encounters is that you get to a point of persuasion, unbending resolve, persuasion about the possibility of God as far as that matter is concerned. Are we blessed? Second Timothy, please, chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's look at Second Timothy 1 verse 12, the B part. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. The B part says, For I know whom I have believed. Everybody say, I know whom I have believed. Now, you went to school, understand that construction. It didn't say, I have believed. Uh -uh. I know whom. So it's talking about a person first. I had an encounter, and that encounter caused me to believe that person and everything that proceeds from him. Are we together now? And then he says, And I am persuaded that he that person i've had an encounter with is able 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 an understanding of a man's ability an understanding of god's ability i have had an encounter with him i have had an encounter with his word so when i read and he says they shall lay hands on the sick it's not just story it's not just religion this is the foundation of true bible faith so there are no options in it again you know that it is within his power to change my situation you don't say well lord i will try you let me hope that you will work today if you don't work no 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 there is a level a level of resilience you see the depth of your encounter determines the strength of your convictions the depth of your encounter determines the strength of your convictions it's obvious from the way we live and act as believers that there is a void there is a lapse in conviction and this is a product of um, the haze that is around our encounters with the Word of God not the reading of it not the memory of it but that there is a gap it is obvious if I look at this gentleman right now and I tell you do you know you are sitting on the ground he's not going to pray about it he knows he's sitting on a seat. Are we together? He's had an encounter with that seat. 
his his even his physical senses have have responded to that reality he knows he's sitting no matter how i try to sway him he has entered a dimension of resolve he knows he's sitting on a seat if i tell him this seat is going to break he says no not just that i, I have seen the dimensions i understand the strength of this seat it can take my weight listen god allows you to vet him and probe him until you find him worth your trust God does not get angry when you ask him questions that lead to your faith being strengthened. Uh -uh. Mary said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And the angel took out time to explain. This is how it will happen. Gideon said, Lord, you are sending me to go and fight the Midianites. I need to stand with conviction. I know those guys. They are fierce. And so is it okay if I ask for a sign? It is powerful to stay with God until you are convinced. I know that there are people here, pastors who have come from several places. Let me challenge you. Do not make boastful statements until they come from the strength of an encounter. You will destroy your life. You will destroy your ministry. You will lack explanations. You will schedule a season of untold suspicion in your life. I always say never stand before Pharaoh until you have seen the burning bush. Say encounters. Bible faith starts with encounters. Encounters produce convictions. Convictions now allow you to act and take steps. It is that step that is called faith hello believing is not faith believing is part of the process that leads to faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word that's faith until action is taken there is no faith are we together now i've always given this example um let me use you john hold on i'm going to stand there stand there just stand there i'm going to call john i want you to answer me but don't come is that all right john come say i'm coming has he come so as far as i'm concerned you have not obeyed me because this should be the reward for your obedience now you have answered that you are coming but you have not come i interpret your not coming as a sign that you you are expressing concern about my reliability you are wondering if i really have this but if i say john come and you come come that step of faith puts pressure on my integrity if i am joking i better found a way of correcting it are we together now yes the bible tells us in acts chapter 4 listen the bible says that one time they were going at the hour of prayer and then the bible says that they saw a man who was crippled now they were not stupid that man was crippled if you've seen a crippled man you know that there are no strength in his limbs even if he stands you know that he would take the grace of god and then the bible says that he was calling on them to give him arms and then peter said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen i give unto you he says in the name of jesus i come under an authority i represent a government and i invoke the power that backs that government and i ask you if you believe stand the bible says the man was still looking at them now i hope you know the holy ghost was already hovering with all his possibilities but at the mercy of a man who has not manifested faith and then the bible says peter had to help him hold my hands the bible says peter held his hands and he leaping leaping the power is released at the point of action it is the action that makes it faith not the determination to act the determination to act helps you to eventually manifest faith but the faith is only when action is taken he leaping stood he leaping stood he would have remained there forever he leaping stood are we together now yes so when 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 you hear the word of god you see this is why the dispensing of the word of god is so important because faith is based on a basis 
and the basis is not good word the basis is not good intention a nice positive statement cannot give you faith it does not have the capacity to release that god is only committed to backing what is his word are we together now if it is not consistent with his character and it is not his word there is no platform you may act but you are not acting upon the word you are acting upon an information so the word of god comes and then you hear that word listen like you're hearing right now and you believe and the holy ghost helps your unbelief he supplies to you that grace and that enablement number one to consider that god is able it is within his power to create scenarios around your mind and your spirit that strengthens your conviction he can remind you and say lest you doubt have you forgotten that january this year something was about to happen and all of these anchors together to build your faith because a response will be needed shortly from you and that response must be on his on the standpoint of conviction everybody say conviction how do you look at someone who is barren and tell the person go it takes a while for pregnancy to show and that woman believes it's not when she meets with her husband that she gets pregnant no the husband only gives the word manifestation right and she leaves or you're seeing someone like some of you are sick now and then when it's time to say be healed all of a sudden how do you explain someone having a lump or a growth or a cancer and at the speed a fraction of a second is gone brothers and sisters that's what faith does i want you to believe this the bible says this is the victory this is the system where we believers command victory as an experience by engaging their encounters produce persuasion lord you are not a joker lord you believe i i believe you your word is true your word is real you are you are not trying to flatter me you gave jesus christ that would not be a joke on the cross and on the strength of that lord i am willing to act listen the final step is action but not blind action it has to be the action required by god this is where we miss it again are we together confession is a generic action that ought, it is the manifestation of the spirit of faith the bible says we having the same spirit of faith as it is written i believe and therefore i speak so we believe and therefore we speak are we together speaking is a generic action but there are many possibilities we want to produce in our lives that require actions that must be added in addition to speaking for instance the action that is required for your heavens to be open is that you bring before the Lord your tithe. Are we together now? No matter how much you confess your heavens opening, you must take that action. And if you take that action not believing, you just dropped money. You drop 10% of an amount. It's not a charm. The power is released through understanding. I am coming because I have an understanding. I have a comprehension of what I am doing. And Lord, I thank you because you are my high priest standing in heaven. Hebrews 7 and verse 8, the Bible says, Here on earth men gave tithes, but in heaven he received them. Talking about the system with which God performs that function of his office that is in the order of Melchizedek. Right? Like he received the tithe of Abraham and spoke a blessing upon Abraham. So he, our Melchizedek, our high priest, receives that tithe and authorizes that the heavens be opened and that the blessing is activated on our lives. But that will never happen just by dropping money. It's not about the money. There is an understanding. So your tithing is the specific action that is tied to that open heavens. Are we together now? You pray and fast, it is spiritual, but it will not replace the action wherewith that result was tied to. So it is important that we have understanding to know what action has been defined by God's wisdom that is tied to the outcome we desire. Are we together? One time, Jesus prayed for someone who was blind. And the Bible says, in this case, he spat on the ground. 
and then made sputum out of it and put it in his eyes and said go wash at the pool called Siloam that is sent now that was the action if that man turned and started praising God and danced there for one day he would never be open he would, the eyes would not be open he was taking action but the action was not the one required are we together now Mary understood this and said whatever he tells you to do do not whatever you think he wants to be done so it is important that you find out what is the system of this partnership as far as this is concerned I want multiplication I want increase is it a possibility in God yes it is now I believe it but what is the system tied what does God require that a man do as a symbol of his partnership with him to actualize that dimension of reality we must find out so when we start scripture we are not just trying to know we are finding our place of partnership in scripture when you find it then you rejoice because you have found the key to committing God this that action is what we call faith and the Bible says it is the victory that overcomes hmm. the victory that overcomes so what is the key to your healing the Bible says they came to hear and to be healed there is no healing when the word does not come for that and when the word of God comes the power of God is present to heal and then the word comes but when the word comes it does not heal you automatically the word comes and somewhere along the line it produces conviction after conviction the word will compel obedience either through an instruction or whatever it is there are conditions for reception when you come for a meeting like this there is a condition to receive number one is to believe in the Lord number two is to believe the vessel he will use believing the Lord alone will not give you a miracle no sir it will always come from God through men to you are we together Jesus went to certain cities and the Bible says he could not do mighty works that was not the limitation of his power it was not the limitation of his spirit but the inaccurate understanding of the people to create an alignment that can afford him to move in the dimension that they desire tonight listen ladies and gentlemen God did not gather us here to waste our time it is within his power to change our lives it is within his power to wipe our tears are we together now seated here tonight are people who truly truly require all kinds of miracles there are people here to resuscitate their spiritual life it's like it's like it's like a man in ICU a lot has gone haywire the prayer life spiritual life and you're trusting God that there be a true encounter that refires your love for God you must understand the object of your desire and you must understand the system that helps you achieve that miracle there are people here tonight in response to delay and stagnation nothing seems to work nothing it is a bit comforting if other doors open and others are closed it will inspire you to trust that others but it's a terrible thing when all doors in your life close family closed finances closed your body everything closed there are people here because of an acute state of limitation invisible barriers around your life limitation is not retardation limitation is that a a mark has been created that you cannot cross so you rise and you get to a certain place and there is something that pegs you at that level and you never rise I watch it all the time pastors leaders business people individuals helplessly limited sincere but they are limited tonight the God I serve will take that limit away there are people here with sicknesses diseases infirmities real sicknesses probably with death sentences from different medical hospitals and um, maybe they've told you you have a few months to live you have a few weeks to live 
now and of course we have a lot of doctors here i respect their opinion that's their opinion is their educated opinion but tonight whose report will you believe I believe in Jesus. I believe in his words. There are people here with all kinds of marital and family issues. Husband is about to go. Wife is about to go. Children are haywire and they are trusting Lord would you give us order. Of course it is within his power to bring sanity and order. I mentioned these things to build your faith to help you know that your situation is within the scope of God's understanding and he can deal with it. Because sometimes we stay so long in the decadence of our situations that we wonder if God is aware that such a thing can happen to men. Let me tell you the God we serve is all knowing. All knowing. And it is within his power to solve that problem tonight. There are people here with all kinds of barrenness all kinds biological barrenness and all sorts of unfruitfulness in different areas probably trusting god for children and all of that i came back from abuja um in the course of the week and um when i went there i was i was counseling a few people and then i saw a young lady i think a, a couple or so i can't remember exactly and they were excited the last time i was there the woman the lady had been they'd been trusting god for a child all kinds of funny medical reports you know she had something in her womb her tubes i don't know what what they gave all kinds of stories and there she had given birth you know to a very bouncing healthy uh, child and she was telling me the news and laughing listen be careful what you believe it is within your power to choose what you believe nothing forces itself on you you can choose this is a wonderful thing this is a fact but i choose to reject it it's a choice anything that is not consistent with the counsel of god it is within your power to choose to reject it are we together there are people here under all kinds of academic and career challenges no job no lifting all kinds of strange occurrences that are not consistent with God's desire. How about demonic patterns, mysterious occurrences in the lives of people? Patterns that you cannot account for. God wants to step in. There are people here, and I believe this probably affects a lot of people, especially with the recession, the reality of lack and poverty. Lord, what is the way out? Lord, what is the way out? I can't keep struggling from hand to mouth. We've shared extensively. There are all kinds of teachings about the economic system of the kingdom. And I would plead that you get those teachings. They are free. Because when it comes to prosperity, the gospel has to be taught. There is an understanding that must be built in your mind. Now, God can give you breakthrough as a communication of his might and mercy. But you are never established financially through breakthrough. It will take an understanding to build a system that lifts you out of the realm and the grip of poverty forever. Say amen. amen. There are people here trusting God for direction. You have come confused, not knowing what to do. You thought you had God, but right now you are in the middle of total confusion and God must speak for you. I want to welcome you because in his presence there is direction. And finally, all of these are lists that the Spirit of God was just writing out for me as I, I mean, just stating out as I, I, I wrote them out. And lastly, there are people here trusting God for very strong impartations. What is an impartation? A transference of possibilities. Transference of possibilities. Impartation is as real as the chair you are sitting on. You can transfer possibilities possibilities also come with the alignment that makes those dimensions of the anointing function freely transference of possibilities see the thing with the anointing is if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that if you are not sure it is not there it's like a woman who is pregnant for a while she may doubt if she's pregnant or not but the time comes it becomes very clear very obvious regardless of where your request falls in this I want you to know that the God of heaven who has gathered us tonight will visit you and give you testimonies. 
It's going to be a very quick walk tonight. The Lord is going to be healing the sick. The Lord is going to be setting the captives free. And like I told us last week, it is also an anointing service. And I don't, I don't do anointing services carelessly, but there are instructions that God gave me. The anointing oil that will be used tonight, the Lord asked me, it's been with me since uh, I think yesterday. I prayed with it all through until um, it was only this morning while I was coming that I carried it and brought it. There is a heavy grace. Oil does not anoint. The oil has to be anointed itself by a, a vessel who is anointed. Nothing is anointed on its own. It has to be anointed to become a platform. Are we together now? Tonight, what is your responsibility? Be convicted. Be persuaded that God is able. All that has happened before now, the prayers, the testimonies, and all of that is to build your faith. Some of you are coming here for the first time. You've heard about the miracles. Many of you have a cynical attitude of doubting men of God. Everybody you see walking in unusual dimensions of the anointing. We have joined naysayers around town to think everybody is fake. Everybody is a devil. Everybody is using charm. You know, I humorously said it last week. Uh, even if you use charm, the condition to carry the kind of power you see, even through a charm, is a condition that you have to think twice. People just say it as if you just collect a charm and put it in your pocket. No, sir. God gave gifts to men. The gifts are not talents. The gifts are people. He anointed people by his predetermined counsel so that they can be platforms to be able to communicate his possibilities to people. I'm honored every time I have the opportunity to minister. There are people streaming from all over the world with different issues. Several nations, at least 47 or so nations of the world, if I'm not mistaken, connecting. And God cannot be joking. He's not playing games with us. Are we together? Everybody say, I believe. Say, Lord, tonight, I believe you. I know you are able and I trust you to step in in the name of Jesus it will be for you like day and night just all of a sudden you will find out that that door that has been closed maybe forever listen it doesn't take time time is not in the equation I've taught you this time is never in the equation the anointing of the spirit is not a suggestion the anointing of the spirit is God's possibility at work in men that causes men to manifest results they were not born with. Are we together now? We are talking about a dimension that is superior to any intelligence of men. This is not some kind of superior science. This is not superior spiritism. We are talking of God showing up in the scene, standing face to face with a man's barrier. Hallelujah. I want you to be angry tonight and insist. Thank you. And say, Lord, that door must be open. I was so touched and blessed during the prayer session. Have you experienced the reality of triumph? I mean, there are people here who, whose testimonies have been tearsome. Tonight, you can activate something that will make your six to eight hours spent here to be worth the while that you get up in the morning and within three days one door opens another door opens another dimension of encounter all of a sudden hunger all of a sudden you step back to your church and fire on the altar i mean just by stepping and people are rising up from wheelchairs and miracles signs and wonders you bless people you shake someone's hand and all through that day a door opens you introduce something i believe it i believe it the lord wants to turn you to literally be supernatural supernatural not just in this blind talk of supernatural that does not produce results literally that your life becomes a testament that they would look at you like they did Paul and Barnabas and they call them Zeus and Hermes, Greek gods because they, they discerned that this level of result cannot happen with men listen, believe it believe it brothers and sisters yokes are breakable 
causes are destroyable limitations are breakable are you hearing what i'm saying sicknesses are healable anointings are impartable there is nothing that you desire don't make it look as though god is mising his power no he is able to stretch his hands and do mighty things but you must believe tonight we love ourselves but everybody is going to have to stand and contend and say lord i have seen a dimension of your grace but i must step into it lord i have seen a dimension of breakthrough and favor but it's not yet a reality in my life every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be you broken hold on you, overcome. you know why i started singing that song i saw a crown that's why i started singing it listen you see the way the spirit of god works is that he reveals the dimension of god that he wants to make manifest in the midst of the people are we together now that's why i raised that song you need to learn how to partner with the supernatural he shows you like a luring this is the dimension it's up to you to respond yeah lord we receive the spirit and the bride telling the word to come the word has revealed his intention so the spirit communicates to the bride and the bride in partnership with the spirit says come come lord jesus come miracles come breakthroughs come deliverances come open doors come speed come speed loose chains loose bands God is a mighty God. Do not allow your situations diminish the power of God. It doesn't take time. The level of grace it takes to produce your results is available. Mm. It's available. I've taught you that there are three dimensions for reception in the spirit. Number one is through encounters. When you have an encounter, something is deposited into you number two by obedience to principles there is a dimension of god's power that is deposited in principles whether a believer or a non-believer whoever activates those principles that dimension of his power is released immediately like the power of seed time and harvest is not for christians a dimension of god's power was encapsulated in that principle but the third dimension of reception is alignment through a man's covenant with god men have covenant with god not old and new their dealings with God have brought them to a point where God has vowed a vow on their behalf and you can stand upon the platform of their dealings with God and receive realities that your faith level cannot afford every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Let me tell you something that happened yesterday. I didn't plan to share it, but but something happened. I was sleeping, and I had a dream. I thought it was a dream. Yesterday, now, while I was sleeping, I had a dream. And then because I had kept the jar of oil and I opened the cover and then I had a dream now you know I don't share so much of my encounters because there are all kinds of cynical people and I had the, a dream and then the Lord was telling me you know I should how I'm going to pray on the oil that later on we used to minister to you and then something strange happened I just opened my eyes and there was an angel standing at the door my door now now those those experiences are not strange to me you know but this was very unique he stood there and i looked and oil started coming out of my hand and the lord says i should put my hand on this jar this jar and i tell you i was surprised it would almost be maybe the quarter the size of a cup i just put my hand there 
and I was just praying in the spirit. That was the instruction that God gave me. Gave me that instruction. That's why I told you oil does not anoint. There is an encounter. There is an encounter. Are we together now? There is an encounter. And when it began to happen, I was, I was, I was, well, I wasn't surprised. But then when everything was done, the angel never even said anything. Just at my door. Just stood there and was watching. And when it was time, I noticed, of course, my hands were still wet, but it didn't seem to be flowing. And that was it. Whether he went through the door, went up, I don't even know how he left. And that was the end of it. Right from the time, you know, my boys had come to work for me, I started sensing that there were going to be visitations of the Spirit. And I was hurrying up to dismiss them. As soon as they left, I just locked the door and I sat down and boom, my room was full of God's presence and all of that. And, and I, I, when I sat down, my eyes were open and all of a sudden I saw gates, gates opening like gates, very strange gates opening. But then I knew that God by that vision was telling me what among other things would happen in the meeting, but most importantly, what the anointing would do. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord will bring breakthroughs in your life today that will surprise you. You believe that? Rise up on your feet. I want you to lift up your voice and pray one minute and say, Father, I'm set for your visitation. My faith is alive and I believe you. Lift your voice and pray. My faith is alive. I believe you. Jabrandos kataprakatalados. Enkreto katalabrande sekete prakatalabadas. Jabrete kete proskodo brandi gedibalas. Jabrandes kariada balarabalarabos. Lord, we receive. We receive. Hallelujah. We're going to be very fast. Tonight is a vigil. I know that, in fact, you can't believe how far time has gone. But I trust God for grace tonight. I want to see how God will grant me grace. And I'll be able to come out to all the overflows all the overflows one two three by the grace of god and he will grant us grace in the name of jesus christ 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 please bring the three people now that the power of god comes i'm seeing an angel walking and touching three people in here all inside here now will you open up the gate yeah. open up the door Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Shalamana Open up the gate. Open up the door. Shabranda Karato Sodo Braskada Baliatakata. Open up the Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to pray for breakthrough now. Such a strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. There are people here who have been tied. It's time to release that grace for breakthrough. And I want you to bring them out. Please don't stop playing. Please, guys, you know she's on. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now at the count of three, let that breakthrough anointing right now begin to touch and change the lives of people. One, two, three, take that breakthrough now. Take that breakthrough now. Bring them out. Shapatakata. Step into that dimension.
Shake it, take it, take it, books. Right at the back. I see the angels of the Lord bringing people into strange levels of breakthrough. Breakthrough. Shapatos kelataria. Mente kotos shotos. Eprekekekaya. No limitation. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Breakthroughs. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. Breakthroughs. Shapos katalatosia. Ebreketeketos. Shakatos setas. Never be the same. Never be the same. Lift your hands. I see a key hanging in the realm of the spirit. This is access. There are men right now. You are entering into dimensions of possibilities. Lift your hands. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. This is a baptism. Keys, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a bunch of keys. Lord Jesus, for your glory, let the closed door open at the count of three. One, two, three. The name that is above all names. Access in the realm of the spirit. Shapato sote lekata. I command access right now by the power of the Holy Ghost access to dimensions access to levels access to possibilities close doors opening the Lord showed me gates and I decree those gates are opening, 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 opening in the name of Jesus. Those gates are opening. No power stands against you tonight. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I decree and declare the opening of strange gates, the opening of strange gates. hallelujah hallelujah we are going to do a quick walk please clear this way for me there are two angels that stand before me now my left and my right and the Lord is asking me to pass round and come I will do that very quickly as I do that the Lord is going to be breaking chains and taking away limitations in the name of Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus miracles 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost supernatural miracles take them out in the name of jesus miracles in the name of jesus miracles 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost miracles in the name of jesus supernatural miracles i release you now i release you now i release you now I release you now. Step into anointings. Step into graces. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the spirit of the living God. There are chains I'm seeing on people's hands. Chains, 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 chains. Break it now. Chains, break it now. Chains, break it now. Get ready, this road. I see chains, 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 chains. Let it break now. Let it break now in the name of Jesus. Let it break now, now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it break now in the name of Jesus. Supernatural miracles, chains breaking in the name of Jesus. Chains breaking in the name of Jesus. Chains breaking in the name of Jesus. Chains breaking. Chains breaking. Chains breaking, chains breaking, breaking, breaking. Shadows sotosh kalai, rakataka. Let it break now. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands here. I stretch my hands right now. Every chain, in the name of Jesus. This is a miracle service. I command that the chains are broken, 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 broken now, broken now, 
in the name of Jesus broken you can't stand it that chain breaks now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost 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 I'm seeing the hand of the Lord a wind of his spirit coming here Lord what is happening here in the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone being taken out of a pit out of a pit out of a pit in the name of Jesus the son of the living God out of a pit I proclaim it the spirit of the Lord is upon me and I decree and declare I decree and declare captivity ended in the name of Jesus I'm seeing a ring in someone's finger that demonic ring lives now that demonic ring lives now I see it by the spirit that demonic ring lives now I curse it by the God of heaven where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty I see rings rings I curse it by the God of heaven I curse it in the name of Jesus Ataparatoshi Entekaratokotoba Shekretoski Labaya Empreketokoshubreke Can I go out? Ratakarotoshubregedeka Those outside I want you to get ready There is an anointing There is an anointing The Lord is saying I should stretch my hands here This media place in the name of Jesus Barato Shesesika Ekreto Sopraka Maleketo Shekreskaya Ebrekete Ketelekata Shabrakato Skedea Those here, I want you to lift your hands No matter where you are No matter where you are, I want you to believe As soon as I pass here No matter what the issue is The hand of God is about to touch you Thank you, Jesus. Right now, let there be miracles. Now, I pass these roads. Let there be miracles. Every strange spirit. Now, be gone, be gone, be gone now. In the name of Jesus, be gone now. Every strange spirit. The Lord Jesus is in this place. The Lord Jesus is in this place. I stretch my hands now. Over, 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 over. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Over now. In the name of Jesus. Now, 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 in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hand. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Stand up. Stand up. In the name of Jesus. Hold the baby. Now, out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil. Madam, look at me. The Lord is bringing you breakthrough now. I'm seeing you crying, and the Lord is saying, in your tears. I'm coming to you. I know you are far, but I will come to you. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus, the anointing is touching some people here. I'm still like chains broken. Chains broken. Let it break right now. In the name of Jesus, out of him. There's hands in this young man. Be God now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, out now, out now, out now, out now, be gone. In the name of Jesus, be gone. In the name of Jesus, be gone. In the name of Jesus, look at me, my dear. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your sins are over, over. In the name of Jesus, over now. In the name of Jesus. No matter where you are, no matter how far, I want you to connect by faith. Look at me. Delay over your family ends now. Ends now in the name of Jesus Christ. Clear and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. There is a spirit in this. Now. In the name of Jesus. There's someone here, I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing. There's someone here God wants to now declare 
Where is that person? I cause that spirit now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me come to this tent overflow now. Lift your hands, all of you. Lift your hands, all of you. Lift your hands. Now, listen. The Lord is giving me an instruction. All of you are, I don't know what overflow is this. Four now. Three. Overflow. Eight. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Something is going to happen right to the back. I'm seeing fire. One, two, three. Now, 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 now. Cause those spirits. I release breakthroughs now in this overflow. In the name of Jesus. To the back. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I'm seeing several of you inside pits. Now, now. Come now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is Ezekiel? Ezekiel. I'm hearing a name, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Hold on, be careful. Please be careful. Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Ezekiel. There is something God is touching you. The first four rows inside, inside the main building, first four rows. There's someone right now. The power of God is touching. First four rows inside. Lord, thank you. Let, let that person be touched now. Now, first four rows inside. God is bringing deliverance. Where's Ezekiel? Who is Ibo? You are the Ibo. Come. Where are you from? Huh? Okay. Anambra State. I want to pray for you. You believe that the Lord is going to I see a lot of witchcraft in your family and the Lord wants to set you free. Please, those of you outside, I don't, don't think because you are outside came out to show you that God is serious about your case. Don't think because you are standing, it means you are missing. No. Wherever you are, God can locate you. Are we together now? Salome, Salome, who is Salome? Someone outside here, Salome, I'm standing close to you. Salome, come, stand here. In the name of Jesus, I set you free and I set your family free right now. In the name of Jesus, hold on. These two guys, lift your hands, two of you. An anointing is coming on two of you now. Lift your hands. These two gentlemen pray. Father, let them take of that anointing now. Drink of that grace. Drink of that fire. Step into a new dimension now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are Salome. In the name of Jesus. Zonkua. Who is from Zonkua here? Zonkua or something. I'm hearing the Lord is asking me. We have a lot to do. We are going to be very fast because we'll soon pray for the sick now. So, Kua. Hallelujah. Please, don't, don't make this place rowdy. Where are you from? Hold on. Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Are you sisters? You are sisters. There is a spirit of death in your family. Come. What, why are you crying? It's well. Things are not going. Everything is scattered. Okay, look at me look at me two of you shout jesus as loud as you can want to go that's the end of it lord i set them free help them under the anointing please there is somebody the spirit of the lord is ministering to me i don't know what god is people outside there is somebody around here want to prophesy to the person bring the person that's the person in the name of jesus christ I'm, I'm seeing a snake. God, my God, I'm seeing a not not this person. I'm seeing a snake, and the Lord is saying, even the lawful captives. That's what the Spirit of God is ministering to me. Please lift your hands, those of you here. Someone has got to be free. I'm Lord, that person right now. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let the hand of God come upon that person right now. That person has to be free. Has to has to be free in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus here it is is coming now I see like light coming on someone right now in the name of Jesus Christ 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I set you free now by the power of the Holy Spirit I set you free I'm ministering to people out now is there a name like that Kauna is it Kauna or Kauna please to be fast Kauna who is that I'm, I'm going to this overflow now Kauna is there someone like that please I want you to open your mouth and say Lord I receive the breakthrough you are bringing lift your voice and begin to speak it I receive it. I receive it. Oh God, come. What do you do? Huh? Where? Do you do business? Why? I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing God empowering you in business. Do you have an elder sister? I'm seeing a lady. This is a lady looking just like you. I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus. I took out time because of the massive deliverance that will happen here now. This very room. I'm walking here. Please hear me. There are mothers who what is going to happen to your children is going to come from your standing here now. So please release your faith. I want to pray. I want to pray for you. It ends. It's over now. In the name of Jesus. It's over by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'll walk it to the front and then I'll come down. Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to start from the front there. Please just allow me to do my thing. Let's just do it very much because we're going to pray for the sick. All these people lying shortly. I'm going to ask all of you to sit no. That anybody on a wheelchair or on a your stand up right now. When I ask you to stand, you will stand up and take away whatever you came with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Um, my God. I'm going to pass and there is nothing special about me. It's just a communication, a channel for the Lord to touch you. Come. Um, the man. What is it you are holding? The Lord is saying, what are you looking for? You are looking for a job. Huh? And the Lord is saying, I shall release a job to your life. You believe that? Receive your job now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. Father, I pray, Spirit of the living God, that you will blow upon this place. As I pass this place, let no yoke, let no chain stand. In the name of Jesus. Them now in the name of Jesus, I bring you life by the power of the spirit, the life of the life of God by the power of the spirit. Lease life right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every darkness, leave. every trace of darkness leaves, 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 leaves now, leaves now, 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 leaves now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every trace of darkness must go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. It must go now. It must go now. Someone with pile is being healed now. Somewhere here. Someone with pile is being healed now. Someone with pile, you're going to feel like fire going through your body. We'll pray for the sick shortly. Be healed now. Fire is on your head. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a yoke of delay here. This row. Somebody, somebody has to be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that delay be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let that delay be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's to a new level. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is renewing. 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 I hear renewal. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm standing in this row because the angel of the Lord is standing here and he wants to touch somebody right now. In the name of Jesus, let it be over. Let it be over by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now. 
Please help them, my God. My sister, you are praying and I'm hearing your prayer. Come, you are telling the Lord to visit you. I'm hearing your prayers in my ears and the Lord is saying I should, that he should give you a visitation. Who is this? My children. This is your husband? Yes, sir. Where is he? He's in Berlin. I want to pray for you. I don't like what I see. Right? The Lord is going to set them free because I've seen everything is tied down for this family. Nothing is working. Yes, sir. Is that true? The Lord is going to step in now. Edo State. Edo State. I'm from Edo State. What the Spirit of God is showing me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm pray for you. Please. Father, let there be a miracle right now. I end it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I end it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God. Now, see this thing the Lord shows me all the time. Please, everybody lift your hands inside or outside. Lift your hands now. I'm seeing a map. I don't know why God always shows me this. I'm seeing a map and the spirit of the Lord through that map is taking me to Benway State. Now, everyone from Benway State, get ready. The anointing of God comes upon you now. Benway State, Benway State, the Lord is setting people free. Benway State, right now, Shekatos, Kalatos, inside and outside, Benway State, Benway State, inside, outside, Benway State, I see breakthroughs coming. Benway State, anointings, Mata Lakota, is a sign and a wonder that the Lord does, where He locates people by states, locates people by states, and pray now. If you're in Benway State, this unction is on you. The work is on you inside. My God, I'm seeing people inside, inside the main auditorium. Breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs. I'm hearing or to go or to go breakthroughs, strange breakthroughs, strange breakthroughs or to go. Shakato Sekete, Egreto Shalabariata, Embrakato Shataya Lakosata. Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, you are, I'm standing close to you and your name is Jacob. Lift your hands. It's over now. Forever. Over. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the, there's somebody praying in this room. The power of God is coming on him now. Someone is praying a prayer. In the name of Jesus, you are stepping into a level. The spirit of wisdom is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is it Asabe? Asabe, I'm hearing the name Asabe. Quickly, I want to see how God will grant us grace this evening. There are so many sick people we have to pray for. Asabe, is it Asabe? I'm hearing Asabe in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, my dear. Look at my eyes. My eyes. Look at my eyes. Break every chain. Break every chain. Visit her family, oh God, once and for all. Let this be the season. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is from Enugu State? Enugu State. Hold on, hold on. Please don't fight yourselves. Madam, where are you from? I'm from me. Enugu State. I'm going to pray for you. Choma. What? Choma. 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 I'm hearing a name Choma. We're going to pray. Choma. You are inside. The Choma I'm talking about at the main auditorium. Choma, where are you? Give Jesus praise. I'm going to pray for you. Your name is Choma. What's your name? Choma. Your name is Choma. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is set family free. 
right now because this is one of your prayer requests i'm looking at your prayer request in a vision what did you say the lord should i'm seeing your prayer request on top of you and i'm seeing that you're writing that god should bring breakthrough for your family he will he will he will we're talking about the spirit of the lord in the name of jesus let it be over my brother stand up look at me your relationship with the lord jesus look at me you love jesus i'm seeing your legs tied and i'm seeing snake of your legs down to your head your relationship with the lord jesus christ is where this will start from be free now out in the name of jesus help him in the name of jesus christ where did you come from my dear you are from Isuka. in the name of jesus christ hold my hands let it be over now by the power of the holy spirit let it be over now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ I'm seeing that map again. The Lord shows me Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna now. The power of God is looking to Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna, inside and outside. You are from Southern Kaduna. I'm seeing the map of Kaduna State. And the Lord is touching people from that state right now. There are several people inside, ushers, different people. The Lord is touching people. Southern Kaduna. Miracles, miracles. I'm seeing like a, a, the cover. The cover of a well be open in the name of Jesus. Let it be by the Spirit of the Living God. By the Spirit of the Living God. By the Spirit of the Living God. Let it end now. I stretch my hands to you. Let it end. Captivity must end in the name of Jesus Christ. Captivity must end now. Captivity must end. Captivity must end. Shada sete karotash. Embrekete shala pradosa subriada. Shala brinde keto prasada banana ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing Italy, Italy, the country, Italy. Who has a relative in Italy? You come. Please quickly. Who do you have in Italy? My other sister. Where is she? She's in Italy. Have you heard from her? No, it has been long. There's, there's a problem. I'm seeing that lady is in a serious problem. She needs a miracle. Did we discuss this with you? Yes, yeah, she discussed it with my mom. I'm saying, did I discuss it with you? No, sir. She's in Italy. There is a serious problem. Huh? I'm seeing deportation. We have to pray for her. There is a serious issue. Not only deportation, but she's about to get into trouble. The Lord brings this thing so that He will set you free. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's what I was waiting for. In Jesus' name. There's somebody in front among the people lying down there. Um, I'm seeing the Lord touching their family. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle. Those of you coming for the first time, this is what happens in the miracle service. Is is these are not just miracles, they are called signs and wonders. They are operations of the spirit. You can see me call a state, and everybody on that, that state is under the influence of the spirit. It's not some magic, these are operations, these are superior dimensions of the operation of the spirit of the living God. I want to pray for the lady in Italy. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now. A miracle right now. Something is leaving you, even you who is standing. This has caused delay in your life. The Lord is about to give you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural speed. The Lord ends captivity in your life. Let it end now. Captivity is ending by the Spirit and the power of God. Captivity is ending. Hallelujah. There is somebody inside here. I'm seeing a vision. You are a, you are a professional footballer. Come out. Something has tied you down. It's time for you to move up. Who is that? You are a footballer. That's why you came here. Who is that? Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. 
Lord Jesus, we honor you. Leave her. I want to pray for her. Something is happening. That's why I'm standing. Look at me. Lord Jesus, let this oppression over her family end. In the name of Jesus Christ. The same thing happening to her is happening to someone right at the back. In the name of Jesus. You play football? Oh, this is your brother. From where? Somebody cheated you. We have to pray for you. Huh? Where do you want to travel to? I want to go to Europe. Huh? Europe. But you know that God has to take you to a clean way. Huh? If you want to smuggle your way and go to Europe, the devil will go and hijack your life and destroy you and they will throw you back. Do you understand? Because I see God lifting you in this career. The Lord is taking you very, very far. You believe that? Hold my hands. Lord Jesus, I bring him into this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be for you. You see, prophecy does not just reveal. Prophecy creates. We make things that have no business happening to happen. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the road is clear for you now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Seven months pregnant. There's a woman I need to pray for. Seven months pregnant. Seven months pregnant. Come. You are pregnant. How many months? Seven months. The Lord is telling me to take away CS. Hold my hands. Jesus. When are you due? Next month. September. You are due September. When? Do you know? You don't know. Anything from September 19th, get ready. Huh? In the name of Jesus, I hold you and I declare, I stop CS now by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a problem with this baby, as I'm seeing. Is that true? Yes. I told you. This baby is not lying correctly and it's affecting you. If we don't pray, something will happen and you give birth to a dead baby. We correct it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you. I bring the life of Christ to you. In the name of Jesus, you will give birth normally by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick now, but uh, who is this? You are pregnant? How many months? Seven months? Yes, sir. Have you gone to the hospital? Where is your husband? He's at home, sir. Husbands, husbands. They send their wives and stay back at home. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Put your hand on your stomach. God is going to give you a dream about the name of this child. Receive grace to name the child exactly what you see. Huh? Father, in the name of Jesus, let it be. In the name of Jesus, let it be by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it be by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it be by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We'll soon pray for the sick, but I want to do something. Look at me. This lady. Out of her now. I release the life of Jesus Christ. And I curse the works of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I'm seeing fire. It's like it's looking for someone in this room. This is something that has to do with someone's family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just this room. Because I'm seeing the Lord is revealing to me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The power of God will come upon whoever that person is. And that will end it right now. End it right now. Family. God is touching the families. In the name of Jesus. It is not by power. 
It's not by might, it's by the Spirit of God. It's not by power. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me someone's prayer request. Prayer point number one. Let my sister have a child. Who is that? Prayer point number one. You are wearing red. Break every chain. Break every chain. I hope you are not telling lies. What was your first prayer request? Let my sister and my brother have a baby. Where are they? They are in their various places. Your sister, how long has she been married? Going to three years. Did she have a child before? No, but my brother has. Did she take in before? No. This person is wearing red. I will pray for you, but I'm seeing somebody wearing red. This is the person in the vision the Lord is showing me. Who is that? This is the person I saw, but I will pray with you. Listen, I want you to believe that no barren person, there is no need to go back without a child. It's, it's, there is not necessary. Hold on, I'm not just praying for barren people at random, but just let them come since they're here. We'll pray for people. We're about to pray for people now. We'll take our time to minister. The anointing is there. You see that even the vigils, sometimes you close your eyes and it's already morning. Praise the Lord. My friend, you love Jesus? Kai, please don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. I'm seeing you standing and I want to pray. I know I always pray, but this guy smokes, uh, um, what they call that thing. But I know people smoke all kinds of things, but this guy, your own is acute. You are here, but truthfully speaking, you cannot help. You can take as much of that thing till it destroys you. I'm even seeing that you have some. I don't know whether it's at home. Please, who is that? Don't be embarrassed. The Lord wants to set you free. If you sit down, that's your, that's, that's for you. Whether you are inside, outside, make your way. Don't be ashamed. Just come out here. I want to pray for you now. My dear, I want you to call. Where are they? Who, who are you standing in for? Ladi Abutu. Huh? Ladi Abutu. You? No, You're the, my sister. Your sister. Okay, I want to pray. The person I'm talking about, please summon the courage to stand here. I want to pray for you. I want you to call her after this meeting and tell her to get ready. God is going to give her a baby boy. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you because your power is available to set the captives free. I decree and declare. Let it be right now. Establish it in Jesus' name. It's over now. You are the one who came. Come. We have to pray. Your brother, you said they are barren. I'm not seeing your brother barren. He has two children. How many two children? Hold on, let me talk to you. How many children? The first one was a miscarriage. Miscarriage? How many children are there now? The second one died like two weeks after. I'm seeing two children that is not a miscarriage. They were born, but they died. Two, two children. Now it's, there's no child at all. The one they had died like weeks or so. How many weeks? Two weeks, Two weeks after birth. One and one day. And he just died. We have to pray. You understand? You, you're standing in for them and you believe God will help them. We have to pray. As you're praying for them, it will never be part of your life. You have no business with that thing. Somebody needs to come out. This wee wee thing. Who is the person? Let's celebrate him. Don't, don't feel bad. Hallelujah. He's your friend. He's your brother. He smokes this thing. He smokes... Uh, huh? Do you love Jesus? You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I have to pray for him. My friend, how are you? Can you hear me? I uh, can hear you. I have to pray for him. You see, the same thing the anointing, when you smoke this thing and when you are under the influence of the anointing it's exactly what happens when you smoke these leaves you see those leaves there is a lady come and join him i'm seeing a lady don't be embarrassed please jesus is setting you free there is a lady you can't help yourself this is not the issue of being good or bad please run boldly and come if you waste our time you just sit where you are 
one lady there is a lady this thing has destroyed it's not like you like it but you can't help it it comes upon you like an anointing and you have to come my dear let's pray we have to pray for the sick now in the name of jesus christ i agree with you i terminate the yoke of barrenness right now sister and brother in the name of jesus they take him now you're here for the same reason you're here for the same reason in the name of jesus you're standing for yourself your sister if i ask for people who have who want children except you are standing for somebody if you are standing for yourself make sure you are you have a husband or a wife praise god we, we are bible believers but we are not stupid people make sure you are married officially because i know that there are people who just live together um you don't you don't love god and then we have to stay of course god is merciful the spirit of god is not letting me rest over the lady that we are going to pray for in the name of jesus let there be miracles we're a family nobody looks down and embarrasses there's no condemnation here whatsoever we're here to help we're here to show you the message of god hold my hands my dear this is a lady ah no this is not how the person i'm talking about is here in this venue you are here you are not asleep you are awake you are hearing what i'm saying this lady is you understand barrenness okay. father in the name of jesus touch them in the name of jesus touch them hold on don't worry uh, we are going to pray for the sick who is this why are you here madam please just be patient why is she here if it's not the case i mentioned um can I pray for you, my friend? You are the one who brought him. Where is he from? He's, he's from, staring he's at from me. Benway State, sir. Eh? He's from Benway State. He's from Benway State. You see how the guy yes, is staring sir. at me? If he has his way, he can eat and swallow me as if it's easy. Between you and me, it's a long distance. It's not what you are saying. <laughs> it's a very long distance. Stretch your hands and let's pray for this guy. He's a nice person. This, this is what we, we and co can do. Let's pray. Let's pray. My friend, don't worry. We are praying for you, eh? It's not just you. Stretch your hands, saints of God. You are anointed. Let's pray for him. Lord, help this gentleman. Please, I still insist, this lady, if God grants you grace, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. We love you. And in the name of Jesus, we pray for you sincerely. By the compassion of the Christ, we pray for you that the power of this, this substance abuse is broken in your life. In the name of Jesus, who is Rebecca? Rebecca, 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 Rebecca. I have to talk to that person quickly and then we'll pray for the sick. You can't imagine how the time is gone. We're still going to anoint. It's already morning. Rebecca, is there anyone? Huh? Sister. Your sister. I'll pray for you, but what's your name? What's Rebecca. your name? Rebecca. My dear, come. Who is this? Rebecca, the lady that smokes is in. This thing has depressed this lady and changed her. That's why I want to pray for you. What's your name? Rukaya. Rukaya. Rukaya, come. I love you, eh? Come, you're a darling. We're not, we're not here to make you feel bad at all. Listen, let me tell you something. Huh? One of the keys to walking in the anointing is love. You don't love people, you will never walk in authentic power. When God reveals to you things about people's lives, it's not because you are better than them. Are we together now? The goal of this revelation is to extend the hand of God's love. This is a wonderful lady. You can see very lovely, beautiful lady that the devil wants to destroy. So every time words come like this or when we pray for people, this is a family of faith where everybody is a product of God's mercy and grace. Are we together, darling? I, I know that you may not like some of them it may not even be bad friends they just got into all of these things and let me tell you maturity does not deliver people from spirits you can be growing older and still remain 
You believe the Lord Jesus will help you? Hmm? You've tried to stop this thing, Abby. Yes. And you'll try and it won't work. Yes. Problems keep coming up that I just can't stop. What do you take? I smoke, I take drugs, I drink. You drink? Yes. Please stretch your hands over this lady. Pray as if you are praying for your own daughter. Pray as if you are praying for your own child. Lord, have mercy on this dear lady. We refuse to leave her to the devil. We love her. Pray, some of you are looking at me. Pray with all your heart. Lord, help this lady. Usually people take these things as a result of depression, all kinds of challenges, their lack of understanding the word of God, their lack of encounter with the word of God is what produces this kind of devilish effect. Hallelujah. Look at me, my dear. You are my friend, eh? Don't cry. You are my friend from today. God will help you, eh? Say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, eh? Pastor Alpha, please, eh? You will follow up this lady. Just help her to stand strong. Some of these ladies, it's just a combination of loneliness and then they meet all kinds of bad people. By the way, when, when it's time to do the final prayer, we're going to pray against these bad people around our community whose lives is to frustrate and destroy people. There are many ladies here you want to love God and, and live for Him. But there are all these boys around that make it look like serving God is a waste of time. And they keep distracting you and before you know it, in the name of love, in the name of relationship, and, and in the name of wanting to marry you, they derail you from the path of God. Anybody who must make you leave God to marry you is not an irresponsible person. That prayer has already been answered. The answer is no. Leave the person quickly. Don't say I'm waiting on God. God is not a fool. Are we together? So go and meet Pastor Alpha. He will help you. Eh? He will collect your details and your... Rebecca, all of you, three of you, I cannot even remember why I asked you to come out, but let me pray for you. You are standing in for your sister. You love Jesus. Friends, eh? You love Jesus, but be careful so that, um, you know, your company matters as much as your work with God. The Lord will help you. Huh? In Jesus' name, over now in your life. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is setting her free. I'm seeing something leaving her. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let her be free from it. That devil of darkness lets you go. Rebecca, the Lord is bringing you liberty. In the name of Jesus, it's over now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, this favor is lifted from your life forever. In Jesus' name. Two of you are Rebecca. Your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I agree with you. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you. Now, what's that a song? Gashina, Gamuna, Sir King Aljana. Gashina, Gashina, Gamuna, Sirkin Al Janna, Yana, Gashina, Gamuna, Yana. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray on this now. You can imagine it's to five. Stretch your hands here. Let's pray. God is a miracle worker. The testimonies here is a revelation that God gave us and an instruction. And my God, what a joy to life. Stretch your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Jabratos Kalabrende Geva Sarabakuriata Katash. Jabratos Sobredi Shikarata Stretch your hands in the name of Jesus. Mandala Kapratos Katavridish Kalabraniakata. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Are you praying? Father, we agree. We agree for miracles. We agree for 
We agree for wonders. Mante kalas kota mbriata to siziata katalo karusia. Bredo gosho bredis kalabrata katafaradash. Le katabrando susi briata. E kata. Jabrata shepregede bosh. Pray. We receive miracles. We receive signs. We receive wonders. In the name of Jesus. Lord, release miracles to families. Release signs, wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let impossible situations come under the influence of your spirit. Makotopa shabradaka sode barato sesiana kosh. Agradaka barato gojo brendige de balato siadakata. Shabraka barakoto sobrigedia. Rabadaka da balada koso sobriada balada bosh. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we decree and declare, agree with me. Right now, let every impossible situation turn into a miracle right now. Lord, this is a representation of the cries and the desires of your people. Scattered around this place and many across the nations of the world. Lord, we agree that you are a miracle worker and we decree and declare that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. Visit the barren, heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, wipe the tears of your people by the power of your word. Let there be miracles. We release miracles, 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 miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We thank you. We call it done in the name of Jesus Christ. We call it done in the name of Jesus Christ. We call it done. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You can trust what you are hearing now. It can't be the devil speaking to you. Not after this atmosphere. You can trust what you are hearing now. For some of you, he's saying, I am still God. I am still God. In spite of all that has happened in your life, I am still God. I am still God. I am still God. You have come too far to doubt. I am still God. I am still God. Spirit of the living God, evermore we desire you. You have called this place Koinonia, a place of your presence, a place of victory, a place of renewal, a place of revival, a place of restoration. Restoration of fire, restoration of hunger, restoration of grace, restoration of patterns, restoration of covenants. We pray tonight. That Jesus and him alone be glorified in this place. And Father, I pray, if this is all you do tonight, we are more than grateful for giving us an experience 
that shifts us to realms unimagined. This is what separates us from noisemakers. This is the factor of the spirit. Evermore, spirit of the living God, this remains your place. Evermore, evermore. Replace any man as you will and as you wish. Shift us to whatever direction we are that malleable. We pray that as men look at men, they will not see men, but they will see Jesus in the midst of the lampstands, in the midst of the candle stands. We are giving ourselves wholly to this because we know that our profiting will appear unto all. We are tapping, O oh God, into the ancient mysteries that you taught our fathers. You taught they that went ahead of us that when men stay in your presence, they can renew their strength like the eagle. They can mount up with wings. They can run and not be tired. They can walk and not be weary. We exchange our weaknesses tonight with your strength. We exchange our frustrations. We exchange our limitations. We exchange our pain. We exchange our fears. We exchange our doubts. We exchange our confusions. Because worship is a place of exchange. More than a place of reception. Let everything that is not you in us, leave us. Let everything that is not you in us, be exited out of our lives. Let everything that is not you in us, leave. And let that space be filled experientially with more of you. More of your light, more of your power, more of your wisdom. A deeper hunger for fellowship, more than ministry, more than preaching, more than leadership, more than prosperity, more than fame, more than money. May we desire you. Remain the object of our pursuit. Remain the object of our passion. Remain the jurisdiction of our pursuit. Mercy, mercy. Thank you, Father. We bless you, we honor you, and we worship you. Forever be glorified. This is Koinonia. You have called it by its name. You have engraced it by understanding. Let this place remain a tabernacle of your presence. You can do without us. But please carry us along. There are infinite replacements. But we pray by the message of the God of heaven. Let this place remain a center where your eyes continue to behold. Let this place remain a place of mysteries. Let this place remain a place of encounters. Let this place remain a place of miracles, signs, wonders. Let this place remain a place of bread, Bethel. Understanding the richness, the abundance of your supplies. Let this be the wealthy place. The place where you exchange our limitations for the supplies of heaven. Let this place remain the place where men meet with God we vow that forever you will be glorified 
we vow that forever we will only lift up the anthem of your name we hide behind the cross we hide our flesh we hide every personal agenda and we pray that Jesus and him alone will be seen experienced and known thank you father thank you for your atmosphere in the name of Jesus Christ amen please sit quietly if you can God bless you whoa just help those under the anointing very powerful time very very powerful time every once in a while God will show up in these dimensions those under the anointing just help them just keep them somewhere quiet hallelujah a few minutes with us tonight and then we will pray I want to encourage everyone to continue to press towards the things of God um, it's very easy to be distracted in this kingdom it's very easy to lose focus to major on the minors let's settle down please those inside outside and minor on the majors but God brings us here to help us even by his spirit I want to share with you something very briefly that I believe is very powerful and very instructive and then we'll have the opportunity to pray if you're with me please say amen it's a revelation that God put in my heart is for koinonia but then it's for the body of Christ and I believe that the Lord will help us tonight why prophecies fail please write and let's discuss within a few minutes a very powerful understanding that God gave me why prophecies fail first Timothy chapter 1 please and verse 18 believers continue to struggle with the tragedy of unfulfilled please listen please listen unfulfilled prophecies praise the Lord The Lord is speaking to someone in overflow one. It will not happen as you have seen. I don't know what I'm saying, but the Lord is just asking me to speak it just like that. It will not happen as you have seen. I believe that tonight's um, message may be why the anointing is moving in this dimension. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen in the name of Jesus Christ praise the Lord so many believers continue to battle with unfulfilled prophecies here and there men and women of God all over the world continue to speak the counsel of God the Word of God to individuals but then we notice that people receive these prophecies and most now let me tell you sincerely most of the prophecies we receive never come to pass and tonight is an attempt to very quickly show us what may be wrong and then also to reveal to us the place of the prophetic listen very carefully and the place of the word of god because there are people for instance who have seen things in visions in dreams or have received prophetic words 
from anointed people, genuine people filled with the Holy Spirit. And these prophecies may not have been consistent with the dealings of God. Some of them may have been negative prophecies. And they have remained helpless, believing that just because a man anointed by God, accredited by God, made a pronouncement and utterance to them, it meant that nothing could be done about it and then they sit down and allow those prophecies happen so we're dealing with the prophetic today and i pray that god will grant us understanding so let's go very quickly our time is gone read with me verse 18 everyone one to read this charge i commit unto thee son timothy uh-huh according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou war a good warfare stop there paul is speaking to his son in the gospel timothy and he's saying that some prophecies were released to go ahead of you now understand what he's saying he's encouraging him he's saying mr man be assured of this that we have released prophetic words to go ahead of you but he tells him that by them, those prophecies that have gone ahead of you, you will war a good warfare. Hallelujah. So it is possible that prophetic words can be sent ahead of a person. Please listen very carefully. Whether in ministry, in family life, business, career, whatever it is, that the prophetic is real. Now, let me balance this up front even before we continue our discussion. There are people here and there who probably because of their religious affiliations, their denominations, or the kind and the structure of mentorship they may have received, may have been trained by well-meaning, sincere men and women of God to ignore or despise the prophetic, to despise prophecy. We find people, some persons have been very vocal about the fact that the prophetic is not useful in today's church and all versions of sarcasm has been communicated as regards the prophetic the bible says very clearly and i think that i will just um solve that once and for all in first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 let the word of god speak once and for all first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 if you're a christian please read with me one to read despise not prophesying one more time this is a warning do not despise prophesying do not despise the place of the prophetic in your journey to knowing god and living a meaningful life that means that the bible recognizes that there is a place for the prophetic okay so we establish that up front that there is a place for the prophetic and the bible says to not despise it that means that if you find yourself in an environment where yourself or the leaders around you continue to despise prophesying you don't have to fight anybody you don't have to create trouble but let it be a settled conviction within you that in the journey of a believer there is a place listen carefully there is a place for the prophetic there is a place for prophesying are we together When it comes to the prophetic, the Bible lets us know that even scripture is prophecy. Do you agree with me? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, please. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. It says we have also a more sure word of prophecy when you read in context coming down you will know that he was speaking about scripture as a more sure word of prophecy it says whereunto ye do well that ye take heed now listen very carefully so he's telling you that there are prophesyings that have to do with the speakings of men 
under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? He's telling you that there is another kind of prophesying that is the revelation as captured in scripture. He says to also take heed as well. So do not despise the prophesyings that has to do with the speakings of men. And that you do not despise the prophesying that has to do with the authority of scripture. The prophecy of scripture we call it. Are we together now? Yes. The character of these two dimensions of prophetic operations are not the same. Please listen very, very carefully. So the Bible is prophetic. The words that are written in scripture are prophetic. The words that are spoken by a man under the influence of the spirit of God to you, real time, is also prophetic. But in terms of superiority, please listen. They are not all the same, although engineered by the Spirit of God. The Bible lets us know, please look at me, that the prophecy of Scripture and the prophecy that comes from a vessel, they are all together to the edifying of the saints, but they do not hold the same weight in the Spirit. You have to learn this. The word more sure means more reliable more dependable are we together it attempts to show you the excellency of the prophecy of scripture that means that if given an option for both of them the bible gives you its recommendation in terms of reliability and certainty it tells you to depend on the prophecy that comes from scripture are we together there are many reasons for this and that's that's not that's not where i'm going tonight my goal is to show you why prophecies fail and then to connect a few things and we'll pray the bible in many expressions tells us that scripture has been tried seven times the word seven there means complete that the truths of scripture have been vetted again and again and has been found reliable listen the bible is not the only book that contains pieces of the wisdom of God. Listen carefully. Here and there, God has dealt with people. Here and there, different religions have tapped into the wisdom of God through the understanding of his principles. And they have captured details that are consistent with God's operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Chances are that you can pick a book that is non-Christian. You can pick any religious book on earth and read it and you will find communications that are consistent with the way God would have spoken and how God would have acted. And the results even in those books show you that the agency that supplied that result was not of the devil. It's not an endorsement to the books. The advantage of the Bible is that as a singular compendium, it contains the wisest perspective in all matters. Are we together now? Listen very carefully now. It contains the wisest perspective. Why? Because they are God's opinion. Among all of the books that have been arrayed for the edification of man, the Bible, as a compendium of 66 books, has been recommended by the Spirit of God that it can guide men to know God. It can guide men to become victorious. When you study theology, you will find out that there are many other books. They are generally called extra-biblical texts. There is what we call the annals of the king. There's what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's what we call the books of Jasha. All of these books are extra biblical materials that were written. Are we together now? But then in the wisdom of God and through his predeterminate counsel, he has found out that the truths contained in this compendium we call the Bible is sufficient 
to be the limit of the jurisdiction of your knowing God. You will find many books that contain certain information that may not be captured here. And God is telling you within the context of your civilization, any knowledge about me that is not in this volume is not required for life and godliness in as much as you're working with me is concerned. So the Bible becomes the coordinates, if you allow me to use that word. The Bible becomes the defining jurisdiction for your knowing God. Listen very carefully. I'm showing you the reasons why the word of God is called a more sure word of prophecy. God has vetted the truths here and found out that any believer that settles with scripture as contained in this book, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is no dimension of God required for your knowledge that the truths here in partnership with the Holy Spirit cannot bring you into. So it's called the more sure word. It has predicted your life already. More than any man can predict. More than any man can prophesy. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? The vessel that speaks to you is limited by many factors. Number one, the accuracy of his or her perception. Number two, the accuracy of his or her interpretation. Number three, the atmosphere that became the influence upon which he spoke. Are we together? Number four, the level of renewal of that vessel as at the time he spoke. All of these are factors all together that can interrupt the purity and the quality of the speakings. It doesn't mean the person is fake. These are the things that water down the efficacy of the prophetic. Are we together? And then the mental development of that prophet or that speaker also matters. Chances are that if naturally speaking, I'm a person that detests excellence. If God is giving me a prophetic word that relates to excellence, my, my prior fortitude for trivializing excellence will make that prophetic word not come with the gravity with which it left heaven. Because in my person, I don't find excellence to be something that is needed. If I'm someone, for instance, who does not believe finance and prosperity is useful, are we together? If a prophetic word comes that God is going to make Sam a millionaire, remember I've trained myself to be embarrassed to even talk of millionaire because I've interpreted it as carnality. Chances are that I would just say you are going to be blessed. You see that now. So the efficacy of that prophetic word was corrupted by the limitation of my spiritual understanding. But then let's assume, for instance, that I was accurate enough to deliver it, to be fair enough, and you now receive it. Now remember, I'm not fake. Remember, I'm anointed. Remember, you too, you are not fake. You see that now? Yes. The giver and the believer have to be real for it to work. So we agree that two of us are not fake. Are we together? And now you receive that word. And then... It never comes to pass. And you go back to God and say, Lord, what happened? I got a prophetic word by a man of God. And according to the word, he said, by June, I will have a car. Remember, he called my name. It was accurate. He called the name of my wife. It was accurate. Every other detail was accurate. So it supported my believing him. Yet it did not happen. I even fell down. You can add it. And it didn't happen. He prophesied to me that as I return back, my ministry will expand. He described in detail my ministry. Called the name. Called everything. I went back and after five years were worse than even before I came for that consultation. What is the reason? Why do prophecies fail? This is a question that even men of God, apostles and prophets themselves, 
have not seemed to find an answer to. So usually, as men, the obvious answer is to transfer blames. So I come to you and I say, it has to be your fault. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe me. My track record is there to show. And then the other person says, well, I may have my track record, but I don't know what happened to you as at the time you are speaking to me. I know that it was not God. And then we read scriptures like God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? When you read these scriptures, it further confuses you because you are now looking and say, that means that it is within God's power to bring his word to pass. The reason why many people are confused over spiritual things is because we don't read our Bibles. We listen to people, but we don't study scripture. We do morning devotions. We listen to messages online, profitable and wonderful. But we don't stay with scripture for the purpose of building understanding, building conviction. So most of our convictions are outsourced and borrowed. Our convictions are hardly intrinsic. Something that came as a result of a revelation given by God. Most of our convictions are outsourced. We borrow the confidence of someone we respect. Just because the person said, this is it. We say, this is it too. Why do prophecies fail? Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So many people have relaxed and crossed their legs. So many people have even written the prophetic words that were spoken unto them. Barring women have received prophecies you will have a child and it's five years gone no child sick people in the hospital receive prophetic words do you have a loved one in the hospital yes sir is he sick yes sir about to die yes sir thus saith the lord he shall not die hmm. isaiah 38 Mighty God, we give you praise. Give us understanding and be glorified. Isaiah chapter 38. Mm. In those days, look up please, was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the what? The son of Amos came unto him and said, help me read. Thus saith the Lord. Stop there. So we agreed that it was not the speakings of Isaiah. Thus saith who? The Lord. Set thy house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Don't call anybody fake again because the prophecy is negative. Who spoke negative here? Thus say it who now? Talk to me. I mean, we're Christians. Don't just begin to... The man was a vessel. I brought you Jumia package. You opened it and saw a gun and you arrest. No, you, you don't. I, I was sent. I'm a messenger. Thus say it the Lord. Set your house in order. He says... For thou shalt die. Who are you going to beg? Who will you beg to help you beg God? That God sends a prophet and he speaks. Put your house in order. You are going to die. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto who? <laughs> He turned and prayed unto the Lord. Verse 3. And said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then 
Then, hold on. The first time he said, Thus saith the Lord. Now he's saying, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Verse 5 Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Listen. What was wrong, O oh God, with your understanding? Couldn't you see the end from the beginning again? You sent a prophet with your reputation on him. And within minutes, prophecies changed. This is a discussion between God and a man. A man goes to God and says, God, what did I hear that you said? You said I'm going to die. Let me do something to you that will make you change your own word. Please listen. I have added now 15 days to your, to your years, verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city from the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Next verse. We are reading to verse 8. And this shall be a sign from the Lord that what you now hear is more superior than what you had before. Because the both for and against me came from God. So why, which one should I believe? Remember, thus saith the Lord before came from God. Thus saith the Lord now also came from God. You have kept me in limbo. And God is saying, I will give you a sign. To show you which is superior. Please go back. Verse 7. Verse 7. That the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Which one? Which one didn't he speak? <laughs> Verse 8. Behold... I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which is gone down in the sun this and that and that backwards so the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down he gave him a sign so by the time the guy saw the sun going down he said ah this sign was tied to the second prophecy and based on it i know now and i have confidence that something i have done has made God to override the first prophecy. There is not, let me tell you some interesting things here. Number one, God never admitted he made a mistake. So it was not a mistake. God is, ah, sorry, is it you? Uh, 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 Isaiah, you know how busy I am. I have to speak to this and that. No. God acted as if he didn't talk before. L listen to this. He would have said, okay, go back and say, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't need to cry. I'm God. Am I still not your father? He just changed as if he's not the one. Imagine if you were that prophet. It's as if God just denied you now and left you in trouble. Imagine if Isaiah came to your church. If um, who? Hezekiah came to your church. Miracle service. And you now prophesied. And said, this is what I see. Oh. The same way it moved from positive to negative. I can also stand in the name of the Lord and prophesy to you that by next week, five of you will be in America. And by next week, one person is in jail. The other person is in the hospital. And you will come back and say, Mr. Man, come and arrest this man because he is fake. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy, man did something. Listen to me very carefully. Between the first speaking of God and what he changed, man did something. That means between a positive prophecy and a negative one that happens, there is man in between that does something that can turn prophecy. Please listen to me and learn this.
personal prophecies. Write it down, please. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God. All. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God have conditions that must be adhered to for their actualization. All prophecies. There is no prophecy spoken by any man of God on earth that happens on his own. Are we together? Listen. The prophecy of scripture is a revelation of the preset principles of God that has already been attached to his speakings. Notice. Notice how the construction of scripture is. For every speaking of God, there is a condition. Are you seeing that now? The moment you satisfy that condition, there are some of them you don't even have to pray. The moment you satisfy that condition, it happens. Are we together now? Look at this. I don't need to speak to your ground, your farm, and say in the name of Jesus, except I'm not a man of God. Corn, you must come out this year. No. Already a word had been sent while the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. That means if I never sow, I would not know whether that word is still valid or not. So my sowing gives the word an opportunity to prove itself. And then it grows. That the word of God is more sure because already for everything God says, the principle to actualize it has been added. As a man of God, I can receive prophecy for you. And not be able to be aligned enough to receive the principle that makes that prophecy come to pass. I can tell you God is going to lift you. But the limitation of my prophetic reception does not allow me to tell you what you must do to make that prophecy come to pass. So I just tell you this is what I see. You are great. The word of God says this is what you must do. You are great too. Choose which of the two. That if you never meet a physical man who speaks to you, you can go to Jesus the prophet. I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus the prophet. And look at a scripture and lift that scripture as Jesus speaking to you and say, Jesus, I hear you. I've heard you say to me that it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and do all that you command me this day that you will set me on high above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me. There is no witch in hell. Hear me. If you prophesy to me and say, Apostle, I see failure. You are not wrong. But I, have, I know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. For as long as I walk in keeping with what Jesus the prophet said, there is no divination and there is no enchantment from the pit of hell that can override the authority. In the cadre of authority, the prophecy of scripture stands superior to any human prophecy. Men of God and women of God are gradually pushing prophecy outside of the jurisdiction of his relevance. And members are today becoming slaves to men and women of God. A man seems to be able to own the souls of people because you can just speak to anybody anyhow. And they go back saying, this one has spoken. Apostle Joshua Selman has spoken. No. Prophecies can fail to the negative or to the positive. I can speak to you and say God will bless you. You will eat well. Don't obey the principles of scripture that make for increase and you will be surprised. When men say there is a casting down, you will join them and say there is a casting down. Why? Because you violated the principle. 
there is no truth of scripture. Salvation is the freest thing we know. And the condition is that if thou shalt believe with thy heart, talk to me koinonia, and thou shalt confess with your mouth, that means you can stand around a preacher and he can preach a powerful sermon and you will still go to hell. You had the word, but you still went to hell. This action part, this condition part, is why many prophecies fail. The prophet spoke in scripture that a virgin shall be with child. He didn't say a virgin called Mary. He said a virgin. There were many women who qualified for that prophecy. But one woman aligned herself enough. So the angel came to say, Madam, we have found you favored. And I've taught you that favor does not happen automatically. Mary was understudied from heaven. There were many other ladies, but heaven looked at Mary. Does she sustain, please help them, does she sustain the character? Will Mary be able to stand the embarrassment of getting pregnant from a ghost? The way Mary is, if pressure is too much, are you sure she's not going to corner Joseph and run away? Is this woman, is she liable to receiving a bribe from a rabbi? Mary was not just favored. She was studied. Her alignment was making her partner with prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then the angel came back and said, Mary, we have found you favored. And the favor is that based on our examination, you are the most fit person among the virgins here to carry Jesus. She said, well, um, I don't want to abort prophecy. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And then the angel explained that, okay, this is what will happen. You will not need to meet a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Your stomach will just start bulging out. Don't find it strange. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't worry. It's okay. And she said, be it unto me. Be the word unto me. I received the word. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary would have sat down. And said, no, this deal is not fair. The ghost has to come with you and explain to me. And let me understand. If I see him and I think he's really a spirit and that, do you know it would have delayed the birth of Jesus? Heaven would have had to now go back and start looking for another person again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. So God has spoken great things over our lives. Many of us received the word. We didn't receive the conditions. We left the conditions on the ground. When we fell down, we got up, we received the word. But we left the conditions. As a result, our lives are a shadow of what God said should be. Because we received the word, but did not receive the conditions. The angel comes and tells Joshua that this city will be defeated. But then he gives him the conditions immediately. And demands that the conditions be adhered to in total. So he began to go around Jericho once every day. The seventh day he went seven times and they shouted. And prophecy came to pass. There is no prophecy that happens on his own there are few prophecies in the bible that are called written judgments there are verdicts already that have been declared one of it is the eternal doom of lucifer there is no prayer retreat that will happen to beg god to change his mind about the condition of satan so if you have a dream and you see satan coming back in heaven to join the seraphs you know straight up that you are under attack because based on the truth of scripture written it's a written judgment are we together another written judgment the eternal doom of those who reject christ the antichrist and his cohorts these things are written 
The only thing you can do is to exempt yourself from it. But you cannot stop it. Number three. The reality of curses and yokes on earth is written. Ordinances were intentionally put. The only thing you can... You can't stop curses on the earth. No, they are there. The only thing you can do is exempt yourself from it. You can say minus me and my family. But to say minus it out of the earth, no sir, it is not given to you. You can cast out demons from your life, from a church, from your vicinity, but not from the earth. There is nobody who will stand and gather all the demons on earth because he said, I behold, I give you power. Remember scripture, power. So I have that authority. I've been risen with Christ above all thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. You gather all the demons in one place, catch them, and let there be peace on earth. No, that does not happen. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. The number one reason why prophecies do not come to pass is because people receive the word, but do not receive the condition. The condition for actualizing the prophecies. The other side of this is that you can change any prophecy. Write it down, please. Don't let anybody tell you there are prophetic words that will not change and cannot change. That is against the character of scripture. The Bible shows us again and again that it is within the power of a believer to change prophecies. That means if your father looks at you and says you are cursed, you are a foolish and stupid son, I know a woman, years ago when I was in secondary school, there was a woman who was tired of her son stealing. She would make her little money and this naughty boy would come and carry, continue to fish the money out of the, the mother's wallet. And one day she was angry and she looked at him and cursed him. She said he would stop stealing only when rats stop stealing. Let me tell you, this guy... As soon as he's going out of the cell, he won't reach two weeks, he's back again. They know him, they just open the door, there's nothing to ask. What happened? Mm -mm. Just walk in, we know. Do you think that boy does not have a way out? Imagine that that boy is in a place where he never meets a man who can speak to him. Is there hope for that boy? Yes, sir. There is Jesus the prophet. That he can look at it. That even the lawful captives... Is it in your Bible? A more sure word of prophecy. Even the lawful captives can be delivered. So you can find this truth and believe it. But you just get up and say, wow, I found it. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I'm delivered. Hallelujah. You are not delivered. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You are only informed about deliverance that is possible. Are you seeing how we mock ourselves? We just find it out. Oh, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm done. And right after them, you will see what they say should happen, happen. There are conditions. What made the captive lawfully captive? And what is the condition for that person to be delivered? The biggest hit of this prophetic inaccuracy is in the area of financial prosperity. Many poor people in the church today, the years they have spent waiting for prophecy is the same time they would have activated the blessings of God upon their lives. They have sat down lazily and carelessly and some foolishly waiting for a prophetic word by an accurate man. And members continue to harass men of God around and say, you have spoken, it's not working. I bless you. I bless you. You are correct. But you go and read and study everything the Bible says about the blessing. How it works and how it is activated. And you'll find out that many people are hoping in futility. It's true. Charismatics. This is where charismatics have failed. The excitement that comes with revelation has swallowed up the need for compliance. People just jump here and there. Things will happen. He shall keep the imperfect peace. Yes. And no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling. You go and look for trouble 
and see what happens. It will look as if angels are no longer there. So what happens? I, I, I get what I'm saying now. Yes. You can choose to end your life now, today, right now. You go and stand, you go and stand on the road. Let me be prophesying. In Jesus' name, you will live long. I stand under the oil God has given me. While you stroll foolishly, you use your will that is more powerful. That's the same will that brought Jesus into your heart. Jesus stood at the gate of your heart and would not enter until that will let him in. And you stand in front of a door and a truck. The spirit of death is an opportunist. He looks for a scenario that makes his ministry possible. So he's scouting around Zaria. And here he finds someone about to stand near a T-junction. Carelessly. He will heighten the drunkenness of the driver. And with speed, he will not see you. He will come and clear you. You are dead. Now, resurrection is a different law altogether. We can now start. But as far as that seed is concerned, you are dead. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something that happened to a young man. I'm sure he may be listening or maybe he's here. It's a big mistake that the boy made. He had some carryovers and um, he saw me in a dream, <coughs> according to him. I appeared in a dream and I told him, I said, everything is all right. Now, watch this now. Everything is all right. Very consistent with what God will say. <laughs> Are we together? The same way God looks at the poor and says, let the poor say, I am rich. They said, I'm rich till they became old. Nothing happened. <laughs> and then the gentleman got up and didn't even do anything. He refused to take the carryovers, refused to do anything. And he just sat there and he called me and was sending text messages and was telling me, look, I'm not trying to jeer the gentleman. No, not at all. I'm just trying to use it to correct. Now, you see, that word was at the mercy of a condition. Are we together now? Is it not when your lecturer sees your script? Now, you have done your own part to at least write. The spirit of God can now move upon that man to show you mercy. Mercy is not possible now because the condition to activate the mercy was not granted. The same way the Bible says that you will build houses and you keep looking at your land that house will not be built someone will look at you and say speak to me say I, I, the same thing i told you last year is what god is showing me again the day you take a step of faith and you buy sharp sand one tipper and pour there by faith what happens that's your five loaf and two fish you are ready for a miracle a destiny helper can now come and say what's going on here Say, I'm, I'm starting life. Or I'm pushing this thing by faith. Say, really, come to my office tomorrow. Now, your obedience has allowed prophecy to find expression. Are we together? Yes. Your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children surround your table. You will see your children's children. You are a bad gentleman and you are a bad lady. God will never, that prophecy will never come to pass. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are many guys that just cross their legs. I saw myself. I saw my children. I saw a jeep here. I saw a resort center here. You are dreaming. Let me tell you this. Prophecy will never come to pass because God demands diligence and productivity for wealth to happen. You have ignored that law. And so that prophecy will never come to pass. Are we together? Your marriage will be a blessing if you know what it takes for a husband and a wife to live together. If the only thing you take to your marriage is prophecy, you are in trouble. You must take understanding. You must take what? Understanding. So that when your wife shouts and says, I hate you, I hate you, I hate the day I married you, you just know that she doesn't mean what she's saying. If you carry that, that straight line, prophetic thinking and slap her, that's the end of that marriage. In spite of the fact that the bible says you will see your children's children prophecies can fail when men do not satisfy the conditions that make for the actualization of that prophecy it will fail the same way negative prophecies can be averted i've told you i've shared this with you once and again that 
people continue, you know, here and there, people can have dreams about me over trips that I'm taking, whether by road or by air, and they can send a text and say, Apostle, I got up, I saw a very dangerous dream. Very dangerous dream. And this is it, and I saw a ghastly motor accident, or I saw a plane crash, and you are there. Now, they are not fake, truly. It may be that that's the plot of the enemy. It would be stupid for me to think Satan is going on break for me. No. There are many people who think the devil is attacking them. The devil is not attacking them. Do you know what it takes for Satan to attack you? You to be honest, if you were Satan, will you attack everybody? It's not strategic. What have you done that justifies being attacked? The level of investment you think Satan is making on you is, is, is flattery. Most of what we are getting is the inertia of prophecy. Just sitting on your life and not moving. Because you have refused to do something about it. Take Satan out of the earth. People's condition will only improve a little. Only do what? Improve a little. You will be surprised. You will think if Satan is taken out of the earth, suddenly the poor will be rich. Suddenly. you. In fact, let me tell you, there are many people who that God uses the way the devil pushes them to help them understand God. You will be surprised to see that some people's situation will be worse when Satan is out. Because there's no basis for pain again to bring conviction. Some of you right now are sitting down waiting for prophecies to happen by themselves. Some of our parents received prophecies since 1980, 1970 till today. That prophecy has not come to pass. And we continue to carry disappointment in our hearts. I am showing you right now, listen very carefully, that more than the speakings of any man, you must find a place there are many men of God who people will look and say, I see a grace on you. Say, yes, I, I, somebody has told me before, confirmation. I see that you will be a powerful man of God. Yes, sir. I'm seeing like Reinhard Bonke. I see Reinhard Bonke. The other one said that you will never be like Reinhard. Do you know what Reinhard Bonke did to be Reinhard Bonke? Talk about the times of prayer. Talk about the times of fasting. Listen to me. Talk about the times of engaging the word. Talk about the disciplines that it takes to host God's power. You ignore that there is no Reinhard Bonke for you. The worst, in fact, let me even take it a step further before we pray. The worst one is that hands were laid on you when prophecies came. And you just believe that because hands were laid and I fell down. I got up with conditions satisfied automatically. No, you were engraced by that falling. The real anointing for the result has not yet been given. That anointing for the result is waiting when your obedience is complete. That's when it comes on you. The anointing you received, I'm telling you, is the grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that bring that prophecy. Are we together? It's a simple message, but it will work wonders in your life. You will call your brother very quickly and say, sir, please come. I already know that this your journey is heading nowhere. Just sit down. Let us discuss. Why is this family like this? He said, don't worry. Prophecy just came last week. And you will know who to drive away from your house respectfully. By the time he comes again, singing all kinds of songs and saying, it does not work, Abi, let's walk again. Bring 200,000. Bring one chicken. Bring one bag of rice and then success will imaginarily happen. No, sir. Whether a man is fake or real, the result in your life will be the same if you don't engage it. Did you hear what I said? Whether a prophet is fake or a prophet is real, once there is no engaging the conditions that make for actualizing that prophecy, your result, I guarantee you, will be the same. Is why many people don't go to church. They went to a herbalist and the herbalist prophesied to them. And then they got born again and went to a real man of God. He prophesied to them. The result was the same. Zero. And they said, I don't, there's no difference. There will not be difference because the defining factor is not God, not the prophets, but you, the recipient of that prophecy. 
if God tells you you are going to marry a multi-millionaire, what are you supposed to do? Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. But what, what do you do else where you finish Thanksgiving? You go back and start saying, God, help me. A millionaire means many people will hate him. A millionaire means that he may not have time to rest. A wise person begins to war with prophecy. You, God tells you now you will be a millionaire. How do you behave? Buy new clothes. No, sir. That's not how to conform to prophecy. You go back and follow them who through faith and patience. Once you don't see faith and patience, don't follow them. Even if you see the promise, you must see faith and patience to qualify followership. Anybody you see the promise and you don't see faith, meaning there must be a God equation in their life. There must be something in their equation that forced them to need God. Are we blessed? There are many things today that God has brought this ministry into that God did not directly prophesy to me. I'm not one of those men of God that will lie to you that everything we're seeing is what God... Mm -mm. There are things God did not tell me. I went to the word, Jesus the prophet. I looked at the truths of scripture. I understood the truths of scripture. And I saw the conditions attached to it. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read and studied how Jesus increased in ministry. Jesus increased in ministry because he first increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. That means for anything to increase around you, something must increase within you. That's a revelation. So I don't move around with the brain of 50 members and the prayer request of 5,000 members. It doesn't work that way. I must upgrade myself spiritually, intellectually to be able to host the kind of increase that I trust God to bring. We only know that a crowd came to Jesus, but Jesus grew. At age 12, when his mates were running around, Jesus was at the temple learning, learning. Are we together? There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus around feasts. There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus just enjoying himself. That's the portrait of a serious man of God. You, God has called you into ministry. Every movie that comes out, you must see it and watch it. It's all right if you are called into the movie ministry. But if you are called into the word ministry with power and signs and wonders, that's too much luxury. To host the anointing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. Sincerely, I, I tell you the truth as a man of God. I stand from the standpoint of the knowledge that God has given me. And I look at many people and respectfully I can tell you. There are people that results are far from them. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But even when people stand for me to pray for them, I know that what I'm, I'm doing is not the final solution to that problem. And it is painful as a man of God. Not many people will tell you this truth. Because sometimes you see men of God who are victims of manipulating the ignorance of people. The ignorance of people can be used to the advantage of the man of God. There are times that people stand with seeds here sincerely. And I look at them and they say, Apostle, I just emptied my account and my heart is bleeding. What is this for now? He say, Apostle, I know things can turn around in my family. I know the answer is yes and no. Yes, a breakthrough can come. But sustainable financial open doors, no, sir. There are truths you must learn. So I tell the person, okay, go and get koinonia teachings there. And sometimes as I'm talking to them, they start shaking. The moment they fall, they stand up and just laugh. You see some of them calling their loved ones, it's done. No, it's not exactly done. Honestly. You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You must, you must, you must love God and love people to be dishonest. There are very successful people in this ministry, in business, 
career and so on and so forth every one of them can tell you the different units the different dimensions that construct themselves together to spell success were adhered to where the prophetic was needed they opened themselves to that dimension where prayer was needed they opened themselves where diligence was needed they opened themselves like the ingredients of a, of a meal everything was combined together to equal success this is what i'm teaching you handing over the responsibility of your destiny to the prophetic alone as the ultimate determinant of your success and not staying with the word of God to understand the conditions will end you in futility and in pain. There were many things that I did not see in my life in spite of the prophetic words I kept receiving. I had to study prophecy and say, look, I have to look at this thing and examine it very carefully. And I began to find out if thou shalt diligently, Deuteronomy 28, please give it to us. Deuteronomy 28, if thou shalt diligently hearken, look up please. This is prophecy, the correct approach to prophecy. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to what? Observe and to faith is not just hearing what god has said faith is doing what god says should be done to see that result when the rich man came to jesus he said good master what must i do to be saved apostle the devourer is coming every time i can't hold ten naira like this it's as if there's a bag now let me tell you this i can stand as a man of god please watch this we're going to pray shortly I can stand as a man of God and God can show me a revelation. I can look at, for instance, come Sam, it's looking sharp and smart. Now watch this. You see how sharp and smart Sam is looking. Imagine that God opens my eyes. Now the way prophetic things are interpreted, you have to be spiritual and be grounded in the word to interpret them properly. Because God will open my eyes now. Do you know what I will see? I will see this. I will see Sam holding a basket and I will see water being poured in that basket and going down that can be a template that God is showing me to mean that there is loss and wastage in his life are we together now so he uses because God speaks in pictures the Bible calls it similitudes it is not only words God speaks in pictures so when I see that now watch this I can say ah Sam all that I see, your finance is going down. You say, yes, it's true. Everything going down. You say, yes. You don't cover that basket just with a prophetic word. No. Remember the going down of the finances is a product of many decisions that he is taking. So the real captivity is the financial decisions. His understanding about God's methodologies as far as increase is concerned that affects and influences the decisions he's taking that now authorizes this opportunist called the devourer to destroy him so to really help sam after prophesying to him i'll say sam i need to show you the conditions provided for by scripture to stabilize your finance number one let's look at the spiritual laws you are breaking number two let's look at the understanding let's look at what you are doing you are not producing anything. You are not, you are not diligent. You are not exchanging anything for value. Number two, your reputation is making you to make bad decisions that are above and beyond your financial level. Now, you are closing that door permanently. Remember that knowledge and wisdom are stabilizers of destiny. When Sam goes back now, number one, he will pray and rebuke that spirit. But number two, he has now received a dimension of intelligence that teaches him that patience is godly are we together that teaches him that it is all right to move small in life if all you have is a shoe of 300 naira it is not a mockery on your reputation an understanding you had before called it shame what you have now received calls it process because of that now when the devourer comes as usual 
a fortification has been built through knowledge. Now, the prophecy of Sam, God is changing your life, can now happen. Because favor can now come. A system of preservation has come. This is how Sam is warring with this prophecy. Otherwise, Sam can kneel down and say, yes, sir, I will speak to him. The destiny helper will come and pour the same water into the same basket. So here's what happens in church. And I say this to churches and ministries like ours here that are apostolic and prophetic because many times we have little value for the exegesis of the word, bringing understanding to the saints, bringing illumination because of the charismatism around the demonstration of the spirit and the prophetic. Many times we, we feel embarrassed even as, ma as men of God to settle down and mature believers through the teaching of the word. We would prefer to just begin to move imagine that I, I i come here now and the power of god begins to break out i mean it's easy for you to see that this is that joshua selman you know the bible said this is that so when you bring a visitor you say i told you it will reach 10 minutes when he comes up you'll be flying I, you doubted me now you see it happening but sometimes when you sit down you see the way believers are embarrassed and ashamed when the word of God is taught you, you see that itch, I need something. When someone shouts, they start laughing, you know, it just, it's like it just eases up because many people do not want to grow. We have taught that prophecy is a shortcut to destiny. No, prophecy is part of the requirements. Listen very carefully. It's part of the systems that were put by the wisdom of God for the building of the saints. Prophecy was not designed to replace obedience to God's set order. If I give you a book and I say study this book on church growth, and success and leadership and administration chances are you are going to throw that book away if i say come to me and i will receive just one touch how many touches one one touch you go back your cathedral will enter another dimension that prophecy will work if you have prepared your way like dotham before you go Dotham prepared his way before the lord if you have prepared your way you have done your assignment Oh, with, with Jesus' joy, that oil will come and set your life in order. Before the fire came, there was already a sacrifice prepared already. The fire would not come. The fire cannot come and be hanging in the air and say, oh, yeah, quickly prepare the sacrifice. You prepare the sacrifice first. There are some of you, the prophecy on your life requires a requisite level of transformation for it to come and since your rate of change is slow it will take a long time so when you say god help me god says i'm i'm ready to do it today if you will change to that dimension what do you understand about pastoring thousands of people what do you understand about the diplomacy of conflict management? What do you understand about leadership and administration? What do you understand about finance? What do you understand about impact and influence? What do you understand about preparing sermons? What do you understand about, about giving people an expression, growth? Just anoint me, oh God, don't worry about anything. Let me tell you what you will. You will produce a place with so many miracles that will depend on you. They will never be able to rise. This is the tragedy of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry if i speak to you sam and by tomorrow someone gives sam a house a car do you think next week sam will come for koinonia with speed sam will not even sit down there he will sit down the altar are you seeing that now and then the day let's assume that this is a branch church the day they now want to transfer me to go to the U.S., what do you think God will be telling Sam at that point? Sam will almost die that he had God. No. The emotional connect that comes by reason of the breakthrough he received through my life has made my voice look like the voice of God to him. 
and most often than not god did not speak and tell him to go anywhere he just examined the other replacement they brought and the lazy nature of the man greeted the congregation i said no i won't sit under this grace not at this strategic point of my life and then he will get up and now begin to travel and go and meet me in the u.s this guy's destiny has been wrongly attached to me are you seeing that now to the point that this man can never know god by himself because the definition of christianity and breakthrough as proposed by me is that if you do not receive a prophetic word from me you are grounded you are dead you are finished my name is joshua selman and i'm telling you it's a lie if you take the word of god and believe it and walk within the principles that are kept in the word I repeat to you that no divination and no enchantment. If you are reading the word properly, there are places in the word that will lead you to go and look for men to pray for you. So you don't have to be afraid of being in error. Are we together? I continue to watch with frustration, sincerely speaking. As prophecies continue to be aborted in the lives of people and they blame men of God and continue to make negative prophecies to come to pass in their lives I told you respectfully so that in my entire paternal lineage sincerely I think aside from my dad by the grace of God, I'm the most successful person. Entire, draw the line from anywhere till this. Can you imagine that kind of thing? I saw the spirit of failure and poverty and hardship in my family. You can be the greatest of anything, but live long enough, you must be the least. When I saw it, number one, I didn't deny it. I knew that the, if you deny it, that's another delay you are causing for yourself. The quicker you admitted it, the, the better for you. Just sit down and look at it and say, ah, okay, this is it. I see that there is problem here. But I made up my mind. I, I love the word of God. I found it too. I found it. See, I have set thee above thrones, dominions, above all of this thing every name that is named i started seeing something here jesus the prophet started speaking to my destiny and i had the foolishness to believe him the childlikeness to believe him i believed him so much so that i disbelieved every other thing i saw and then the holy spirit guided me enough to know what are the conditions what does it take to actualize this and then he began to show me step by step and i said it may be painful oh god i may not be able to go through this myself but supply the grace and he says my strength is perfected in your weakness look what he has done today apostle is lucky they pray i remember when they were prophesying that day was it not two of us they prophesied over everybody in a meeting that's what many people say. That's what many parents say. They look at many great men of God and say, ah, this guy, I, he was just lucky. I knew the meeting he got born again. The same altar call was made for everybody. One person responded, another person wished. Please make up your mind. Extraordinary fruitfulness will remain a dream. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are engaging with understanding and the results are showing extraordinary fruitfulness is not just it will december will come and for many people they will find out that nothing like extraordinary fruitfulness happened but if someone makes up his mind like timothy that i'm going to war a good warfare prophecy has been sent ahead of me lord what do i need to do show me your greatest prayer in this season can be is not just show me your ways lord show me the part i have to play show me what do i have to do oh god to change my financial story i've desired fresh oil 
I have fasted and I have prayed. What is the key to the anointing? What is the key to a mighty supply of the spirit upon a man? I found out the key to keep the Holy Spirit close to a man. Because I knew that the nature of the ministry that God had committed to me would require a depth of intimacy. And I didn't want theory. Lord, show me. What keeps the Holy Spirit close to a man? Think of the risk that happens when he becomes far from you. And don't let nobody lie to you that he cannot be far from you. No. Huh. Spirit of the living God. I found him as the secret that he is an ever-present help in time of need. But what do I need to do as the recipient? Thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Let me tell you this. I trust God's way. One of the secrets of my life is that I trust the way of God. Most of us have allowed education, intellect, to corrupt the potency of the ways of God. I believe God. I believe God. I remember when the Lord gave instructions here for miracle service. Foolishly and childishly did it. Everything he says to do, you do. When God declares anything here, we go after him foolishly. I remember a Jimmy here, he would tell you, when the Lord said to put some of the koinonia messages online, audio, audio message that is not very clear people online those of you who are social media experts know that people cannot spend two hours listening to something they don't have that time you break it into sections and someone sits down for two hours 30 minutes listening to volumes and volumes of a message my brothers and my sisters it is not let me tell you 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 will be shocked at the power of god that is released and the energy that prophecy carries when you align with it show me a man who has received a word from a prophet of god or has received a word from scripture and obtained grace from god to understand the requirements and do it i show you a man who you're speaking against your cursing against, your wishing against is a waste of time. My confidence today in life and in ministry is on my determination to keep doing the things that allow to host the presence of God. My confidence today is to keep doing the things that continue to bring increase in my life and in the ministry. That way you can stand and beat your chest under God and know you have entered your Sabbath. Satan can come. Challenges can come. But you are as assured of victory as you are assured of Christ sitting on his throne. My life has no fear. I sincerely mean it because I have found out. I found how to commit God. You commit God in the affairs of your life by obtaining grace to know what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. Buy the ingredients for jollof rice and bring somebody who does not know how to mix them. You have potential for rice. That's prophecy. But that rice will never, never be prepared there. At best, you are going to have nonsense prepared at rice. But then bring somebody who has taken out time to learn how to prepare rice. And then bring the ingredients. And within a short time, as short as an hour, you will see a delicious pot or plate of rice. God is not withholding financial blessings from you. The word has come. If nobody ever spoke it to you, scripture has already told you. God is not withholding increase and influence from you. Something about your not understanding his ways may be responsible. The irresponsibility of allowing prophecy work itself 
thinking it is spiritual is very dangerous. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But when Jesus walked upon the earth, they tried to distract him. And he said, no, 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 no. My meat is to do the will of him that has sent me. Jesus had an option to abort salvation. When he was at Gethsemane, he cried and prayed. Can you take this cup off me? But he said, nevertheless, my will, not my will, but yours be done. And when he took that cross, it was not an angel carrying it. He was carrying it, feeling the weight. The moment he wanted to throw it, he remembered. He remembered. Man will not be grafted through me to be seated. I, 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 if I throw this now, I cannot call many sons to glory. Let me tell you this and I confess to you. There were times in my life when I would be walking through the night and sometimes I would just stop and a joy of the spirit will come over me. Because I saw the days coming. I knew that they were days of joy and rest. And no pain at that point sustained an ability to interrupt my focus. I knew. I was trying to know the Holy Spirit. Knowing the Holy Spirit is hard. Sometimes you want to sleep and he will just tell you to stroll. You will think you are going to pray for one hour. And you will just return to six in the morning. It's the price. While I am doing that, someone is seen in a vision that a young man is going to arise from the north and he will carry the word and the life and the power of Jesus. That prophecy can remain in the realm of the spirit when you do not partner with prophecy. Is God speaking? What have you not done that is making prophecy to not manifest in your life? What have you done to allow a negative prophecy come to pass in your life? Something was said. You saw it in a dream. That the devil wants to oppress you. You saw it in a dream. That an attack was coming to you and your children. You just got up and, and wrote it down. Usually that's what we do. I had a dream. 3.22 a.m. In that dream. I saw knife. I saw all of that. And you didn't do anything about it until six months after that time watch this it will not come as a physical robber your prayer life goes down your finances goes down all helpers leave you what was working stops working that was the dream prophecy seeking expression in your life like hezekiah there's something you would have done about it hey everybody in this house turn every plate upside down I have seen something that is an evil and we can stay the power away. And then you get up and pray. There are many things I see that the devil wants to bring upon people, upon the ministry, upon my life. There are people who send me text messages sometimes, Apostle, this is what I've seen. Pray about the ministry. I don't sit down and cross my legs. While you are sleeping and snoring, I'm awake with God crying and praying. Lord, worship team. Lord, prayer department. Lord, this, there must be increase. People are coming. You are opening up doors. Prophecy. And you say, I saw it too. I saw that by this time, koinonia would have increased. Yes, you saw it, but it was engaged. Is someone getting the teaching this night? Because we are going to pray. You will never see the outstretched arm of God with the assumption that prophecy will work itself out. No. You have a dream and you see people dying in your family. That means there is a word that is bringing death. What do you do about it? You don't wait till somebody dies. Say, ah! And you know, I, I, the other day I told you, you are a witness. What kind of witness is that? You can get up and fast. Fasting is powerful, oh. Yes, listen to me. Our, our Ajebo generation, fasting is important for a man's destiny. You will never be able to do business with God if you cannot turn your plates upside down. There are times you need to sit like Elijah. You write the list of all the nonsense you saw that must change. One by one you are praying. 
What is this I saw about my wife? What is this I saw about my husband? What is this I saw about my business? I saw an attack. I, I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I have a dream. And in that dream I see chains everywhere. In that dream I see people crying. You don't need an interpretation. The character of scripture shows you that mourning is not associated with glory. So already let the Bible interpret that for you that is trouble. You can call somebody. I pray that you have a good friend. That when you need to change prophecy he will be available with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you have a good friend that you say, please, can you stay awake for three hours with me today? I'm sensing the spirit of death over my family. I don't know, but I've been sensing it. And the person says, ah, you know, coincidentally, I had a dream of death. It shouldn't put fear. Your consolation is that the most sure word of prophecy has an ability to superimpose everything planned. And you can get up in the night and agree. And both of you are praying. How do you pray? You engage the truths of scripture. You don't pray and say, God, why now? Where are you? Is it that are you still there? That, that's not prayer. That's just lamentation. You begin to pray when you engage the truth of God's word. I choose life. I'm the head of this home. My children may be too small to choose life, but I stand as a covering. I choose life. When they are in school, I choose life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I've taught you this thing. Listen, if you are married in this place, young or old, you are a man. If you don't go around praying and laying hands on your children, you are not a very good ambassador of this ministry. The children should be sleeping. Don't go, you are not a father because they serve you plate and you are sitting down. You get up and carry that regalia of priesthood. You are changing negative prophecies. Your child comes back with a result from second position to twelfth. The other one from 4 to 18. You don't just flog them. No. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. This is prophecy now. That delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. This is not might. Lord, you have said my seed shall be mighty. Shekakoska. Manda prakatoseleketa. While you are speaking that word, there are powers, let me tell you, that reside in the heavenlies. You speak and command your money. He told Job, Has thou commanded thy money? You, are, you, are, you sleep and wake up with a dream. Someone injects you with HIV and tells you this is HIV. You get up and say, And you know, I'm feeling the spot. You get up and see marks on your body, physical marks from a dream. And you sit down and just laugh. Laugh? No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he comes near fire, he will move. I'm not that mad. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind we want to dwell under the shadow of your wing over every challenge in my life blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wing blow blow say Listen, everything you see in your dream is prophecy, seeking manifestation, good or bad. Everything you see in your dream, in your vision is a prophecy, seeking manifestation. You can allow it, you can change it, you can stop it. Inaction is a disaster to a believer. Is what you don't want that you will see happen. Can you open your mouth in one minute and just blast in the spirit?
Ziketele sopranda katabris kalia. He barata rase ketele banda kapras katabala kata. Shala baranda katabres kete ketele rebos. Se baranda paruko to sopre ketele kata. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please look at me. One of the demands of priesthood, get my message on priesthood, is that men become men of prayer. Not just prayer in terms of petition, but legislators of spiritual reality. Anything you sit and watch will happen. Did you hear what I said? Listen. There was no record of Job praying for himself. There was no record of any man praying for Job. The devil came through him and through his covering to afflict his family. He prayed for his children. It's true that he feared God. It's true that he ensured evil. But that's not the seed for deliverance. You must know how to pray and engage. Listen, let me tell you. Let the devil get used to you not keeping quiet when negative things come. Don't say I'm not a member of prayer band. I'm not a member of this and that. The times that we live in, let me tell you, it requires men with the spirit of Issachar. It's a man who had an understanding of the times. Otherwise, you can confess, I shall not die. And that will sweep you like a chicken. You must have the eyes that see. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I change everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God concerning my life, my family, my finances. Please pray, pray. I change everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Every prophecy that is not of God seeking manifestation through my life, I reject you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I reject you. I speak the word, the most sure word of prophecy. I shall not die, but leave the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath. Shabarakatosh, Embra kata 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 kata, Shaparus kapanya kata ni kata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'd like you to find someone to agree with you. Everything God said or you have seen in the spirit that is consistent with God's will and has been hanging by any power of divination within the second heavens. Lift your voice and cry. I command that it must come to pass. I war a good warfare in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare the joy, the peace, the prosperity, the blessings, the anointing upon my ministry, upon my life. I declare the powers of the heavens holding everything that belongs to me. I command the release by the power of the word of God.
pray few minutes and we are done you are enforcing prophecy Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 18, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh. Whatsoever thou shalt lose, binding and losing thoughts of allowing and disallowing. Are we together now? Please listen to me. Please listen. Listen. That everything that belongs to me and has been held by any power, it must be released now, not tomorrow. Now, lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata parokotos, Repetatatos, Koinonia, pray, pray prophecy to manifestation, pray prophecy to manifestation. I command the release in the name of Jesus Christ. He paroko shata lekata rakata barakato sekete Hallelujah 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 Last prayer, and we are done tonight. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, Him I will trust. Continue, please. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 4. He shall cover me with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night 
nor for the arrow that wasted or flyed by day. Listen very carefully. Look at what the Bible is writing here. Next verse. Six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Seven. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side. It shall not come nigh thee. Eight. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen. That means every time you hear of negative things, someone is dying, they are kidnapping someone, this is happening. In as much as you sympathize with people, you don't do them at the detriment of your own conviction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If Joshua Selman dies today, it does not mean that the truth of scripture giving life is a lie. So in as much as you sympathize with people, do it lovingly, but not at the detriment of the immutability of God's counsel. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. Until you rise up to possess your possession, you will never, never possess your possession. Jesus was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days. Satan came to tempt him. When he defeated him, he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there are controlling powers that continue to see that negative prophecies continue to be enforced in our lives. And until the saints understand how to legislate by the spirit, we will continue to be victims of the speakings of men. Last prayer. Father, every prophetic word that came through your word or through your servant upon my life this year, I stand in partnership. I call it Maranatha. Let that prophecy manifest in my life. Lift your voice and pray. The conditions to make it happen. I obtain grace to understand. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with it. Pray. Every prophetic word about my spiritual life, about my finances, about my marriage, about fruitfulness, I receive by the Spirit. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding to know what to do, to know how to partner with prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one testimony and we'll round up tonight. A gentleman sent me a text and he said he was tired of what was happening to him and his family. You know what people call failure at the edge of breakthrough? That you see good things, but just when your hand is about to obtain it, trouble must ferment itself from wherever and come and destroy you. He said he was tired and one night he took out time that if he's to die here he would die and he would pray listen to me true story he was praying he said he had come here with an oil that i prayed for and then you know he went back and applied that oil and he was praying and praying and praying and then it looked like he fell into a trance and according to him he said i walked to him and i told him to lift two of his hands and when he lifted his hands i started removing what looked like maggots out from his hands like that removed or uh, maybe a number of them when the gentleman said that happened by the next day he got a job next day he got a job see i've told you time does not change anything you must engage with prophecy you must engage with prophecy 
don't wait until miracle service when you write your prayer request and bring it here go and write it now and trust god for grace one hour in the night will not stop your sleep we spend three hours worrying wake up in the night every man in koinonia is an intercessor let me tell you if you're a married man in this place and you're not an intercessor you are not a good ambassador learn it wake up and pray put that request on the ground place your hand on it pray it will look like nothing is happening don't mind what you are seeing you just pray forever oh lord thy word is settled let me tell you what will happen when you pray satan will use the sense realm to send images that negate what you are trying to do because he knows that to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you can even finish that prayer and go back to bed and have a dream that is another negative connotation and you stand up and say but i just wasted my time so these three days prayer and fasting is nothing if it was not bringing an effect to hell the devil would not send you that kind of dream the key is to remain let me tell you this there are certain prayers that you don't pray for one day let me be sincere with you and i don't mean to insult anybody but that understanding that when you pray once is done well i may not have enough experience to challenge that but i can tell you the one i know that when you stay on an issue huh, and you pray and cry jesus prayed he came out saw the disciples went back and prayed the same words the same way three times jesus prayed bible said looking up to jesus not up to any prophet or any man of god don't pray once and sit down how long do i pray until you see the feast manifest in the earth realm you pray on when you see the the cloud manifest in the earth realm it gives you a sign then you know that those realities have reached otherwise please pray if it takes 21 days pray the grace for the the spirit of gluttony that will not allow you to fast and pray i curse it now in the name of jesus it's a different thing if you have a health issue that may not allow you to pray there are many of us the last time you fasted was during um fasting and prayer that's not healthy for your spiritual life please don't say it does not matter everybody know we know where we are coming from by god's grace our children will not go through this but in between where you are coming from and where you are going you must stand as a bridge and flog this thing out once and for all reject spiritual laziness stay with the word please listen to me let me advise you i say this not to everybody at least i have a responsibility over you please obtain grace from god to sit down in one place this spirit of running up and down from here visiting this running and down i cancel that spirit in this season in jesus name you must obtain grace don't sit in your room just in gossiping talking open your bible and sit down for god's sake and study more than listening to a message carry your bible carry your notebook and sit down read something spirit of the living god open my eyes and sit down and read there were times when any house you go to you see people even if they are gisting their bible is in front of them but right now is this these are phones everywhere you sit down you are watching film you are watching this i'm not saying it's wrong but life has seasons for god's sake a farmer who is sleeping during rainy season will be foolish to go to the farm during harvest. The earth still works on seed time and harvest. You are a man of God here. Reduce your physical exposure and stay in the secret place and pray. I move around. I'm a pastor. This I'm a prophet. This I'm a apostle. This sit down in one place with the word. Be sound in scripture. Be mighty in power most of what you need for your destiny is internal sit down 
don't become a busybody roaming here and there you know in the afternoon you are there in the hot sun you are moving around you visit this one i'm not saying visitation is wrong but you are at a critical point of your destiny receive grace to sit down study when you fall asleep and you stand up and you didn't read your bible you didn't pray don't act like nothing happened don't forgive yourself for nothing no you stand up any time is right for prayer if you plan to pray in the morning and evening that's my recommendation for you i've told you the morning times and the evening times are powerful times so said the ministry of jesus there are few times Jesus prayed in the afternoon. I'm not saying prayer in the afternoon is wrong. But the activities of life will not give you the kind of focus. Wake up in the morning and pray. Wake up in the night and pray. Some of you as you go back now, don't say it's too late and it's too cold. Receive grace from God. Stretch a little and pray. And don't just pray anyhow. Pray strategically. Pray scriptures. Obtain grace from God. There's no light you switch on your candle. You switch on your phone instead of just watching a movie and then you 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 watch you watch spirits to enter your destiny there is a price for this thing let me tell you god is not a magician there is a real price either you want it or you don't but if you want it you mean business and be aware of distractors are we together there are people who are sincere people but somehow it looks like because of their weakness they allow the devil just when you want to pray they just come and knock your house have the courage to tell people please i would appreciate it if you want to come and see me i truly would appreciate that you just let me know i may be studying or you can come anytime but please don't be offended if you come and find me studying Somebody should not buy a DVD and come to your house to watch and say he's all spoiled. Is that a blessing? What if he comes to meet you doing something? Please take your life seriously. This is about destiny. Make up your mind that this prophetic word must come to pass. Especially this issue of finances. Go and get... There are too many messages that have been preached around the area of finances. Get it and sit with it. Don't just say lay hands on me. Thank God for seed. Thank God for the prophetic. But sit down. I'm a young man. What does it take to be established? Lord, will I end up in this one room forever? The answer is yes until you change it. You sit down. What do I need to know? Are we together? Father, we thank you. We bless you for tonight. You have shown to us that without engaging prophecy it will fail and you have shown to us that negative prophecies can be changed lord bring us together as a family of faith and as a body of believers to a point where we exalt the truths of your word we exalt the immutability of your counsel more than any opinion we choose the word of God as a sure word, a more sure word of prophecy. We choose the word of God as final authority in all matters over our lives. We stake our lives at your word. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for your precious people. Every condition that needs to be engaged to actualize every prophetic word that is upon their lives. I pray that both the grace and the understanding be revealed to them in the name of Jesus that you will act out in faith and that in the name of Jesus the Lord will honor you and the Lord will cause your life to be an unending testimony of wonders do this oh God and be glorified for in Jesus name we pray amen and amen let me make an altar call last week because of time I couldn't make an altar call a gentleman sent me a text and said apostle I was waiting for an altar call I really wanted to give my life to Jesus it broke me so bad I asked the Lord for forgiveness and so no matter what it is we'll have to make an altar call please keep standing we're already rounding up please keep standing let's honor those who will be coming there are people inside there are people outside who are saying apostle I desire to hand my life over completely to Jesus 
or I desire to rededicate my life. If there's anyone like that, you're inside, you're outside, you're saying, I need Jesus, time is gone, but I need Jesus. Please make your way to the front very quickly. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anybody to come. Whether you're outside, make your way inside. God bless you. God bless you. Someone is coming. God bless you. Those outside overflow one, overflow two. Please clear the way for them very quickly. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You are standing before Jesus. This is the beginning of a great life, the beginning of a great destiny. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them, protocol. If there's anyone coming, if you're coming, please double up. Make it quick, make it quick. Our time is gone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very, very much. God bless you. This is a place where no one at all for any reason and under any condition would condemn you. We're here. We're a family. We love you. We salute your courage for making Jesus Lord of your life. This is why, uh, one of the reasons why he created this platform. It's my joy and my honor to lead you to Jesus, young, old. I want you to lift your right hand and say this passionately and truthfully after me. Say, Lord Jesus tonight if you're joining them please come very quickly so that you participate in the prayer come quickly say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word and i declare by faith that you are lord you are savior you are king over my life and my destiny i ask for mercy i ask for forgiveness i ask for the newness of life from tonight I declare that I'm a child of God. I am saved. The spirit of the Lord lives within me. The grace to live a victorious life is mine right now. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for this once precious people you have brought by your spirit. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain